father of the bride. We're going to get the scoop from the cast, including stars Gloria Stefan and Andy Garcia. We're also going to have the third hour's chat with my buddy Anthony Anderson. Looking forward to that. And later, I'm sure there's some Goonies fans out there. That movie turns 37 this month, and we thought we'd revisit that with an old interview that we found in our vault with producer Steven Spielberg. Ever heard of him? Thought so. That's all coming up at first. Here's today's pop star headlines. Let's get to it. First, we got some big news for Beyonce fans. Overnight, the Grammy winner revealing the title and release date for what appears to be her next solo studio album. Multiple streaming services tweeting out the artwork with the words Act One Renaissance mm. and the release date of July 29th. It will reportedly feature 16 new tracks. And as the Act One wording teases, it could be just the first of a, maybe a multi-part album from Beyonce. Wow. Renaissance would be the seventh studio album from her. The last solo album way back in 2016, Smash Hit Lemonade. Since then, she's released a number of projects, including an album with her husband, Jay-Z, and the visual album, Black is King. But Beyonce fans this morning have something to look forward to uh, uh, this summer, that's for sure. Next up, we're getting our first look at Ryan Gosling as Ken in the upcoming Barbie movie. And to say it blew up the internet would be an understatement because it did. Let's show you. There he is in his bleached blonde denim spray tan glory. <laughs> You're not sure how we know it's Ken if you look around the waistband there. Oh my God, it says oh. Ken. It's Ken oh on the other oh wow. And as you can imagine, the first look sent people into a frenzy, but we're going to have to wait until July 20th to the 23rd to see the Barbie movie. Oh. We earlier wait, July 2023? Yeah. yeah. 2023. Yeah. Yes. Oh, like in a year? In a year. Oh yes. My God. Thank okay. you for that clarification. <laughs> you have a long time. Uh, There's Margot Robbie, by the way, as Barbie. Wow. We got that image back in April. We don't know really anything about this project. You know, who's doing this is Greta Gerwig. Oh, yeah. She's directing it. So there's a lot of reason to believe it's not going to be as straightforward as oh. you might think it is. So hopefully we'll see the Malibu Mansion soon. I mean, did Ken wear like a jean suit like that? I don't like remember. the Canadian I don't tuxedo? Yeah. No. I, wouldn't I, don't have. I don't know. Yeah. I, I have no say. idea. Next up, Sylvester Stallone is taking on his first ever big TV role, and it's with Taylor Sheridan, the creator oh. of Yellowstone in 1883 and mayor of Kings, or Youngstown. That's Jeremy. This guy has got so many great shows at Paramount. Yeah. This one's called Tulsa King. It's a new series that follows Sylvester Stallone's mob boss character as he's released from prison and relocated to Tulsa, Oklahoma, where he gets up to no good. Of course. Here's a look at the trailer. When I was 17, I wanted to be a gangster. I married this life, and now, after keeping my mouth shut, I'm gonna see if it married me back. Tulsa, I want you to go there. This is a joke. And you in town? Is it that obvious? That looks so that good to me. It had me, I mean, the, from Yellowstone, from The Sopranos. Yeah. yeah. Stallone gets out of jail, still a bag. That's got me a hello I right now. I know. Savannah's less you. excited. I don't understand. No, I mean, that's fine. Like, it's how you yeah. feel about Bridgerton. Oh, yeah. oh, then you hate like, it. You have your thing, I have mine. And he looks totally great. Makes sense now. Yeah. Tulsa King premieres on Paramount Plus in November. And finally, quickly, we're learning more, a little bit more about the upcoming Fatal Attraction TV series. Whoa. Now we're the original okay, film. Go. I got you back now. Yeah, okay. All right. Go. It was released in 1987. It starred Michael Douglas and Glenn Coase. It became uh, close. It became a classic uh, thriller. Uh, and then it followed the man who had a brief affair with a woman. She turns out to be obsessive. And now for the Paramount Plus adaptation, star Joshua Jackson revealing how they're diving deeper into the Glenn Close character while keeping one of the most unsettling parts from the original. Oh, what rabbit. is already one of the most iconic and, and compelling characters I think ever put on screen. We have the opportunity to burrow down deeper and deeper and deeper into that character to give a, a richer sense of like how that woman became and, and why she did the things that she did. There is definitely a bunny. Oh, oh hide your pets. Uh, That'll yeah. be one to watch. No premiere date for that That'll quite yet. A few more stories for you up next. Sesame Street put together a fun song for all the dads out there ahead of Father's Day, made to sound and look like the now iconic Friends opening credits. This parody sees Elmo, Wesley, and Rosita singing with their dads for a true Father's Day treat. We love you every day and week and month and every year. I'll be there for you to guide you along. I'll be there for you. You grow big and strong I'll be there for you Cause your dad loves you Oh, 
that is well done, Sesame Street. Well done. And of course, a happy early Father's Day going out there, going to all you fathers and father figures for that matter. All right, finally, Austin Butler. Guys everywhere, get used to the name. He's the young actor taking on the role of Elvis in the upcoming biopic. Stars Tom Hanks as well. Butler has already gotten praise for his turn as the king. Well, last night, Austin stopped by The Tonight Show, Jimmy Fallon, and to give Jimmy a little how to move like Elvis lesson. I just called it the sidewinder. Yep. You can kind of, you can go from walking into a side. <laughs> so you go to the side first, and then from there, you just tap to the side. <laughs> but you, you use this uh, almost like a windmill. A windmill, okay, ready? And this, this hand can almost be like you're holding a cane or something. Okay. So you kind of, from the side. <laughs> 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 It's like Elvis's version of the moonwalk. That looked very easy for him to do. All right, let's go. Um, that's all we've got is the form of headlines, but we've got a big show still coming up. Everything that you're going to want to know about the hilarious new Father of the Bride remake we'll have for you next. Stick with it. At 73, Prince Charles is still waiting for the job that is his birthright. Do we want Charles? Do we want a monarchy? I'm Keir Simmons, and we'll take on these questions and more in our new podcast, Born to Rule. Listen now. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Ukraine and Russia. Can you help me understand what's going on? So to help make sense of it, we've created a newscast just for them. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. We'll meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Hey, who's this? Now Tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Women's basketball has been systematically held back. After 49 years of Title IX, we still have work to do. In Their Court, a podcast from NBC News and NBC Sports that goes inside the issues of inequality in women's sports. Listen now. We're here to start conversations about the big things happening in our world. Because it's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now Tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Welcome back to Popstar Plus. Father of the Bride, the movie, featured the overwhelming antics of Steve Martin's character, George Banks, and of course, who could forget wedding planner, Frank, played by the hilarious Martin Short. The beloved film has a new remake, and the cast told us all about it. I would describe this version of Father of the Bride as uh, a remake, but it's not exactly like the two other versions of this. And it's the first time I, I've, I've seen a Hollywood movie with two different cultures, you know, Mexican and a Cuban American wedding. That's what sets this movie apart. It's very authentic to both cultures. It's very specific, while at the same time being very universally themed, you know, very relatable for everyone. It's fun. It's such yeah. a fun movie. I really think that it stands on its own really well. You don't have to have watched the other Father of the Brides to really understand it. I have something to say. I'm engaged. Wow. <laughs> oh, congratulations, baby. I propose. Wow. You propose? You propose? Oh, okay. you propose? Yes. You propose to him. Mm -hmm. He didn't propose to you. Mm -hmm. Can you do that? Does anyone do that? I think that the Latin cast will be mainly a flavor of the movie because the central theme is really about how hard it is for the older generations to keep up with the changes happening in these times. For me, that theme feels like something that should speak across all cultures. And I kind of hope that most people, regardless of what ethnicity or, or race they're from, they can say like, yeah, that's my dad. And hopefully people with opposing points of views can still sit together and break bread and enjoy. Two lawyers are out of college working for a nonprofit are going to pay for the wedding. Billy! Puppy. I'm the father of the bride and I will be paying for the wedding and I'm going to be walking my daughter down the aisle. Andy Arcia and Gloria Stefan are like Miami royalty and they're the best of friends so they were the perfect fit for this roles because you know everyone knows who they are and it just felt like this movie was made for them 
to have the privilege of having Gloria there with me as an old longtime friend and, of course, admirer of hers. But the fact that we have a relationship, our families have relationships, it's easy to, to sit and then go, okay, now we're this, and just lose yourself in this imaginary circumstance, but bring all our dynamic that we have in our friendship and in our own marriages that are that can feed the, this this relationship in this particular couple you know i think the best way to describe it is is like having your dream family to work with i did channel martin short's frankness in the sense of uh, there's like a looseness and a hilariousness and a freedom to martin short as a performer and especially in this movie and i think obviously this is a very modern interpretation of what a wedding planner is. But yeah, I think that I was inspired by Martin Short in the sense of like bringing a lot of improv and just kind of like riffing a lot on set and having the freedom to do that. And a lot of that made it into the movie, which I was like, whoa, okay. <laughs> Give me essay as Anna Barra Vera Wang and Uzuha Mura. I think what's so beautiful about both of our characters is they're fortitude to just get the job done. You know, they both just get it done and then surprise themselves. And I think you really can like be or do anything these days. And um, I think our characters should be inspiration. Yeah, I think, in, especially when it comes to personal life, like with family and stuff, I think it's yeah. it's okay to really solidify yourself as the as the outsider and embrace it and, and not be scared to go your own way. Everyone, I think culturally, universally, we're all incredibly different, both as humans and even as cultures, but we are surprisingly the same and we all want the same things. So yes, it's a story about two Latin American families sort of clashing and then coming together, but it's still so universal. I think everybody will be able to relate with a, a character or will be able to relate with different situations. Well, I think that despite our diverse cultures, Latino cultures, because we're all very different, the Mexican from the Cuban, there are things that tie us, such as the love for extended family that is exemplified in this film. You don't see that in any of the other ones the music, the food, the dancing, the celebratory nature that we share, you know, but we're still in the struggle of having our children growing up in a different time and, and having different ways of wanting to be and different ways of wanting to celebrate their love stories. Happy. Ready? Yes, and you? No. Get ready to think, get ready to dance, get ready to laugh and maybe shed cry, one or two yeah. tears. God, that looks so funny. We should mention that you can find Father of the Bride on HBO Max. Coming up next, the third hour and Anthony Anderson. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. What would you like to see from the federal government to keep Buffalo safe? If there is legislation brought to you to ban contraception, would you sign it? What should be focused on that could reduce inflation and avoid a recession? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. This is a critical turn point for this fire. And good evening from New Orleans. Nice to really spend some time with you. Appreciate it. It feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Hallie Jackson now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Women's basketball has been systematically held back. After 49 years of Title IX, we still have work to do. In Their Court, a podcast from NBC News and NBC Sports that goes inside the issues of inequality in women's sports. Listen now. Allie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. To cover the news, you have to be in it. These are families trying to board those trains to Poland. I also want to get home. You'll get home. Every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now.
Welcome back to Popstar Plus. You may know Anthony Anderson from his past role on Blackish or his recent role on the reboot of Law and Order. Well, these days, he's got a new project for Juneteenth, and he told the third hour all about it. This morning, we are catching up with Emmy and Golden Globe nominated actor Anthony Anderson. That's right. For eight seasons, he starred as TV husband and dad, Dre Johnson, on the hit show Blackish, which just aired its final season in April. Anthony also recently reprised a role that he first took on back in 2008, playing detective Kevin Bernard for the return of NBC's original Law and Order series. I would contend the best of the series, but, uh, <laughs> but now, just in time for the celebration of Juneteenth, Mr. Anderson is out with a fantastic new docu-style film. It's from Ancestry. It's called A Dream Delivered, The Lost Letters of Hawkins Wilson, and it unites the descendants of a man born into slavery. Meet your family. Hi, how are you? <laughs> I'm Linda. Hi, I'm Kelly. Kelly, nice Kelly. to meet you. Nice to meet you. I'm Marie. Hi, Marie. Hello. Hello. Are you guys huggers at all? Yes. And so are we. Okay. And we're good. <laughs> <laughs> and they hug, they hug, mm -hmm. they hug. Anthony Anderson, good morning to you, sir. Good morning. Good morning, morning everyone. I mean, so this was a reunion, literally, like more than a century in, in the making. And I understand that, that it had, you had sort of this immediate connection to the project because you spent some time trying to find some of the branches in your tree. I did. I did. Years ago, I, I started and found uh, uh, where I, I come from, uh, uh, a village in Cameroon. Uh, and, and I found it apropos because I'm an artist, and that's where uh, a lot of the artists in Africa come from. Uh, and, and then, so I just wanted to continue to build on, on that family tree, and, and then partnering with uh, Ancestry, I was able to find those leaves, mm -hmm. you know, it, and it dates back to uh, 1852. Wow. You know, uh, 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 my fourth great-grandfather, Owen Bede, uh, you know, was a freedman, a uh, freedman, uh, and... Uh, Worked on a plantation, uh, you know, 70 hours a week from from uh, he had to be on on the field uh, at sunup and made four cents an hour. Yeah. Uh, and uh, he was one of the highest paid workers that they had. And, you know, just, you know, just finding uh, just going through the history, you know, finding, you know, my second grandmother, Nancy, who actually owned her own farm and was oh. farming on her own farm in, in 1910 uh, and they had this blended family. So it it was. It, it, it was a history uh, uh, lesson for me and my family. So, so the descendants of Hawkins, Wil Hawkins Wilkins has that Hawkins Wilkinson has that letter. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's very special, and it, it means more than uh, than most people know beyond the family. Yes, you know Hawkins Wilson's letter. Uh, you know he was sold into slavery uh, as collateral uh, when he was six or seven years old. Uh, we found out in. in, in uh, in the records and torn away from his family. Uh, and 24 years later, he went to the Freedmen's Bureau to find his family mm. uh, as a free man. And, uh, you know, with grave detail, you know, talked about uh, his, his siblings, uh, his mother and all of that and, and who they belong to, which really resonated with me uh, to hear this man talk about his siblings and who they belong to uh, as property. And uh, unfortunately, uh, his letter never made it to uh, his family, uh, but it made it to them a couple of hundred years later uh, with, with Kelly and Marie, and they were able uh, to, to find other family members as descendants uh, of Hawkins Wilson. And speaking to the family, what intrigued you the most about what they thought of, of the letter and, and of everything? Uh, just a sense of uh, a full circle moment, sense of completion. Uh, you know, here it is, you know, a six or seven year old boy being ripped away from his family uh, who remembered everything about his family 24 years later and trying to find them. And uh, and just the sense of what, you know, Kelly and Marie was going through, why, why they did certain things, why they were drawn to certain places, uh, you know, passing through this small town. Uh, you know, they would all they would love to go to passing by this church and going into worship in this church, not knowing that Hawkins Wilson uh, was a minister in that church, wow. not, not knowing that Marie, the mother, uh, would, would go on to become a minister herself. <laughs> so the, these ties that that binded this family together for a couple of hundred years. Came uh, yeah, it came full circle.
We should congratulate you while you're here. You're a college graduate now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Howard I am. University Bison. Yeah. Yes, sir. 30 years after you were supposed to. 30 to, years after I was supposed to graduate back in uh, 1992, I, I finally made it. I finally awesome. made it. Awesome. Of all the, uh, yeah, I was going to say, the, of all the accomplishments that and Anthony Anderson has. It, it, it feels great. It was, I was talking about full circle. Felicia, Dr. Felicia Rashad, who's a friend of mine, Taraji Henson. Uh, Dr. Felicia Rashad is the, uh, the dean of the College of Fine Arts. Uh, Taraji Henson gave uh, the commencement speech, and we were students together at, wow. at Howard University. The assistant dean of the College of Fine Arts, Denise Saunders, uh, we were classmates, and they all helped me uh, matriculate through Howard University. That's amazing. amazing. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you. Well done. Anthony Anderson, Dream Delivered, The Lost Letters of Hawkins Wilson. It can be seen on Ancestry.com slash Black History. That starts tomorrow. And also Paramount Plus and Pluto TV starting on Juneteenth this weekend. Good to see my buddy Anthony Anderson here in Studio 1A. All right, next we're traveling to the Goondocks for a Goonies flashback. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Good evening from New Orleans. Nice to really spend some time with you. Appreciate it. We'll meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Who is this? At 73, Prince Charles is still waiting for the job that is his birthright. Do we want Charles? Do we want a monarchy? I'm Keir Simmons, and we'll take on these questions and more in our new podcast, Born to Rule. Listen now. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Ali Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Welcome back. It's hard to believe that it's been 37 years since the release of Goonies. The cult film is about a pack of kids who stumble upon an old treasure map that takes them on quite the adventure. The film's producer, the one and only Steven Spielberg, told us back in 1985 here at Today all about the film. Today we begin a three-part interview with the indefatigable Steven Spielberg via satellite from California. And first of all, I wanted to know, what's a goonie? Well, a goonie is anybody who doesn't belong to uh, the popular crowd. And uh, a goonie individually might not amount to very much, but when you put six or seven goonies together, you know, you're, you're, you're playing with matches. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, these kids are, are best friends, and they've been together for, you know, in, in, in kid years, perhaps three years, which is a long time for kids that age to be together and know each other. And uh, they each possess these unique talents, and when they all get together, uh, they, they decide to have their last weekend fling or last weekend adventure, which uh, snowballs and becomes what this movie's about. What do you look for when you interview a young child for a movie? Energy, a, a complete, you know, lack of intimidation, a kid who can make me laugh and tell a lot of jokes and be great at video games. I mean, uh... <laughs> one, of the, one of the children is the, is the little Vietnamese boy that you used in Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. Did you know right away that you wanted him in Goonies? Yeah, I, I told uh, Key that we wanted him in Goonies even uh, before anyone else had been, you know, cast. So we actually designed that part. Uh, uh, Key came first, and the writing of that role came second. Two of the children are the children of famous a actors. Who are they? Uh, Josh Brolin is the son of uh, James Brolin, and then uh, Sean Astin is the son of Patty Duke and John Astin. Did that have anything to do with your picking them? We didn't even know they were related to Patty Duke Astin, and we had no idea that uh, Josh Brolin was Jim Brolin's son until after we wanted them. We found out later. It had nothing to do with, and, and it was, it, 
I really respect the kids for never bringing it up. Is this a story been kicking around in your mind for a long time? Do you think it has overtones of, of the Indi Indiana Jones stories? There's a lot of underground chases and rocks that close up secret passages and underground tunnels and all kinds of stuff like that. Well, I think it really has its roots in the Tom Sawyer, Huckleberry Finn, Mark Twain legends, especially the David O. Selznick production of Mark Twain where Tom and Becky were lost in the cave. They right. had all sorts of booby traps and escarpments and Indian Joe climbing up the, you know, the cliff after them with a knife in his teeth. And I, that, I think that was the, 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 the main source of the inspiration for the, uh, the story, Goonies. Look at this. You see what I found? that passion through. Although I'll get blamed for it. If, if nobody likes it, I'll be the one to get blamed for it. But that's pretty much the, you know, the, the, the risk that I take. And I think it's very important to leave the director alone and let him make his movie. When you were a schoolboy in grammar school and high school, you were already dreaming fantasies and stories. Did you ever dream during school hours? A daydream? You mean just sit yes. around the schoolroom and, 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 and zone out staring at the blackboard and not seeing what's written on it? <laughs> yes. Yeah, all the time. About, about four days a week because I always was very careful to be absent one of those five days. Yeah. yeah. You, you were not a straight A student in school, Stephen? I was a straight student at school. <laughs> uh, I, I didn't get, I got straight C's actually. Straight C's, C minuses sometimes. Uh, but no, I was not a straight A, no, no. So cool to see Spielberg way back then. What a trip, and happy birthday, Goonies. All righty then, another terrific episode of Popstar Plus. Well, not too bad anyway. Is come and gone. We hope you enjoyed it. We look forward to seeing you again tomorrow. Same time, same place. Be well. Bye-bye.
Welcome to Shop Today. From my current obsessions in it list to a roundup of favorites for an instant refresh, we bring you the hottest products and the best tips for how to use them. Plus, I sit down with the biggest names in the business in Shop the Stars. It's just perfect. And share the trending products that are worth the hype and buzzworthy. We've got it all, including the latest technology so you can shop right with us with just a click. All this and more only on Shop Today with me, Jill Martin. Welcome to Shop Today. I'm so excited to officially kick off summer with everything you need for the ultimate bash. Whether you're the party goer or the party thrower, this season it's all about reconnecting with those we love and celebrating again. With my own wedding just around the corner, I'm so excited to share the most special items for both big events and small get-togethers. Plus, because it's me, of course, there will be exclusive deals throughout the show, some up to 80% off retail. They will be sprinkled throughout each segment, so be sure to watch them all for some amazing discounts. All right, let's get this party started with my it list of ultimate bash must-haves. And remember, you can shop right along with us by scanning that QR code on your screen. You can also text SHOP to 34318 or head to today.com slash shop all day. First up, let's go inside my beauty bag and start with your go-to party look. This Bounce Magic Fit Creamy Bronzer and Highlighter Duo from Beauty Blender does literally the most. It's a bronzer and highlighter in one, perfect for that quick touch-up or build it for a bolder nighttime look. The set includes a clean velvet matte bronzer and gel cream highlighter and comes in many different shades so you can find the perfect one for your skin tone. Dab the bronzer under your cheekbones and apply the highlighter to the high points of your face for that flawless finish. The Magic Fit Creamy Bronzer and Highlighter Duo from Beauty Blender retails for $32. Now that we've got the foundation for a party look covered, let's move on to your eyes. Throwing on a quick coat of mascara makes such an instant difference. I'm in love with this one from Huda Beauty, and it's sure to become your summer go-to. The Legit Lashes Double-Ended Volumizing and Lengthening Mascara has dual-sided brushes, one for volume, the other side you use for curl. And get this, it retails for less than $30. Another two and one. Moving on to accessories. Such a good time to try out a new accessory and add a fun pop of color to your outfit. And the Viva Joya Resin Ring Set is perfect for that, so on trend now. The set is less than $15 and comes with 24 pieces. Plus, they're so cute. One set has eight different styles, including cuff rings, square rings, stackable rings, and more. Perfect so you can keep a few for yourself and gift the others to your friends and family. I love the cute pastel colors like the adorable green and light blue. And these rings are sure to spruce up any simple outfit. The ring set retails for $14.99. So much fun. Next up, we have our first exclusive deal for the show. Check out these earrings from Golden Thread. Gold earrings are such a big trend right now. Opt for the classic hoop earrings or have fun with a stud. We have the moon and star studs, star crawler, golden butterfly, plus layering, of course, is in. You could wear the studs and hoops together, and with this deal, you won't break the bank. These earrings are 14 karat gold filled, the perfect addition to any outfit. Plus the brand says the earrings are all waterproof and tarnish free. So you could wear them from the pool to the party or to the pool party. The golden thread earrings retail from 80 to 125. But today we have an exclusive deal for Shop Today viewers starting at just $22 for a pair. That's up to 80% off. You don't want to miss it. Scan the QR code below. Next on my it list, the knotted woven handbag. These bags you've seen everywhere. They're so in right now in bright colors, or you could go with the classic black or white. Add a special touch to any outfit, and the woven look keeps the bag casual enough to go from day to night. This bag comes in sizes medium or large. Toss it over your shoulder, carry it as a handbag. Imagine just wearing a simple black dress and this bright green pop. The knotted woven handbag retails for less than $30. Let's talk footwear. Party shoes are a must. And these sandals from Shoots are the perfect pick to elevate any outfit. The Tana vinyl and leather sandal combines a 90s inspired mule with trendy vinyl straps. 
These heels have a square toe and a two and a half inch heel, so they'll add a bit of height, plus the neutral color matches any outfit. The sandals retail for $118. Scan the QR code to get your pair. We're always looking for problem solvers here, and today we have an amazing one. Meet the hot heels from Hollywood Fashion Secrets. The brand is known for their fashion tape, and now they have a solution for your feet, too. The brand says the Hot Heels Foot Spray soothes aches and pains from uncomfortable shoes by soothing sore toes and aching arches. You can spray it onto your bare skin or even directly onto your stockings. The spray is light and dries quickly. This set includes a full-size bottle for home, a mini bottle for on the go, and as we all adjust back to wearing heels again, this is a great buy and a must have. The beauty hack goes for just $18. Lastly, if you wanna ditch the heels for the night or have a more casual event, these sneakers from Veja are getting a ton of buzz on social. And you can see why, because they're a classic style that still stands out. The sneakers from Veja come in multiple styles like classic, retro, high top, metallic, and men's. A good sneaker is such a wardrobe staple. These adorable sneakers start at $100. Well, that wraps up my it list for the ultimate bash. Let's run through these amazing products one more time. We have the bronzer and highlighter duo from Beauty Blender, the mascara from Huda Beauty, the resin ring set, the earrings from Golden Thread, the knotted woven handbag, the sandals from Shoots, the hot heels from Hollywood Fashion Secrets, and the Veja sneakers. To shop these products, scan the QR code below for instant access to all the items you'll see on today's show. You can also text SHOP to 34318 or head to today.com slash shop all day. And just so you know, today may make a commission for purchases made through the QR codes or links on today.com. Coming up, we're bringing you my go-to picks for instantly refreshing your home and kitchen for epic parties. And later, I sit down with the incredible Adina Menzel to talk about her new fashion line, her favorite looks, even a few dance moves. You do not want to miss that. All of that and more coming up only on Chop Today. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. We'll meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Man, who's this? Today is now a podcast. Available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. To cover the news, you have to be in it. These are families trying to board those trains to Poland. I also want to get home. You'll get home. Every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Women's basketball has been systematically held back. After 49 years of Title IX, we still have work to do. In Their Court, a podcast from NBC News and NBC Sports that goes inside the issues of inequality in women's sports. Listen now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. We'll meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Man, who's this? Welcome back to Shop Today. Well, when it comes to a party, sometimes it's the simple things that really pack that extra punch. Whether it's something for your table or some spruced up decor pieces, there's a lot you can do to give your bash an instant refresh. I've rounded up some of my favorite finds that will bring your get together to the next level. Let's get started with beautiful and fun dishes that will give your tablescape a festive summer vibe. The Zach Design Summer Print Dinnerware sets are so colorful. There are multiple seasonal designs to choose from, and each set consists of 12 pieces, including four dinner plates, four salad plates, and four bowls. The brand says they are break resistant, and they are perfect for indoor and outdoor use. I use these all the time. Plus, they're dishwasher safe, so cleanup is easy. The set goes for 48 89 and they really just give the table such a pop. Next up, another great product for any host or as a gift. 
This one is a special deal just for our Shop Today viewers. Check out these designer cocktail napkins and guest towels from the Stationery Studio. The napkins come in seven color combinations and feature a variety of designs and phrases. They are also perfect for drinks, appetizers, or desserts, and the guest towels are three-ply with 10 color options and great for bathrooms or buffets. Both come in sets of 100 and a great way to add color. The retail, 70 to 75, the deal, 35 to 37.50, that's 50% off. Now that you've got your dinnerware and napkins, you'll need servingware and utensils too. Check this out. We've got another great deal just for you. Bon Vivant Designs has wonderful kitchen items. The Agate and Bamboo Kitchen Utensil Set, Agate Top Bamboo Cheese Server Set, and Bamboo and Agate Three-Piece Wine Tool Set. These are hosting essentials that come in three beautiful color stones, pink, blue, and natural, and each stone is unique. The cheese server set includes a cheese fork, a flat knife, and a small spade. I mean, just look how gorgeous these are. The wine set includes a corkscrew, bottle opener, and a knife with bamboo handle. It also comes with a wine pourer and a removable bamboo stopper. The retail for these sets, 56 to 64. The deal, 28 to 32, that's 50% off. I would stock up on these for yourself and as gifts. This next item helps bring some fun to your glass. The Drinks Plinks Silicone Ice Molds add pizzazz to your pitcher. Made of food grade silicone, you can chill your drink in fun ice shapes like hearts, pyramids, hexagons, or order the initial of your guest of honor. Here's a fun hack. You can use them to make iced coffee or iced tea cubes too, so your drinks never get diluted. Check them out starting at $18. Now that you're set with keeping your beverage icy cold, let's give you somewhere to put it. Check out the Funboy Inflatable Floating Drink Station. Take your drink poolside with room for four cups or cans. The Floating Drink Station goes for $24. While you're having some fun in the sun, this summer, don't forget to keep cool too. Check out how much fun this next item is. The giant rainbow sprinkler from Urban Outfitters is truly fun for the whole family. All you do is attach any standard hose and then the fun archway jets spray in all directions. The kids and kids at heart will love this so much. So grab your swimsuit and enjoy all the summer fun. It goes for just $50. Finally, as the sun goes down, light up the summer night with these Bright Town outdoor string lights. They are a huge fan favorite, starting at $16.95 for 25 feet of lights. They are great for hanging on your porch or add for party decor. They really transform a space and make it feel so special and festive. Well, that wraps up our instant refresh. And now that you are all set to give your backyard bash a boost, let's go through the products one more time. The summer print dinnerware sets, by Zach Designs, the Stationery Studio Designer Cocktail Napkins and Guest Towels, the Bon Vivant Designs Bamboo and Agate Sets, the Drinks Plank Silicone Ice Molds, the Fun Boy Inflatable Floating Drink Station, the Giant Rainbow Sprinkler from Urban Outfitters, and the Bright Town Outdoor String Lights. To shop these fun products, scan the QR code below for instant access to all of the items you'll see on today's show. You can also text SHOP to 34318 or head to today.com slash shop all day. Coming up next, we catch up with Broadway star Adina Menzel to chat all things life, love, and of course, letting it go. And later, stick around because we're sharing my favorite buzzworthy items that are sure to be an instant hit at your next bash. All that and more coming up only on Shop Today. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. We'll meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Who is this? Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. This is a critical turn point for this fire.
And good evening from New Orleans. Nice to really spend some time with you. Appreciate it. To cover the news, you have to be in it. These are families trying to board those trains to Poland. I also want to get home. You'll get home. Every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Women's basketball has been systematically held back. After 49 years of Title IX, we still have work to do. In Their Court, a podcast from NBC News and NBC Sports that goes inside the issues of inequality in women's sports. Listen now. We're here to start conversations about the big things happening in our world. Because it's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Welcome back to Shop Today. This episode is all about throwing the ultimate summer bash and sharing good times together. Well, I sat down with the queen of good times herself, the very talented award-winning actress and singer, Adina Menzel. She's used to being in the spotlight with starring roles in shows like Rent, Wicked, and Frozen. And now she's sharing a new passion, fashion. We caught up with her about her new clothing line, her career, and her very exciting new role. Take a look. We have a lot in common. I was a motivational dancer growing up. I was playing singing and you were dancing. Yeah. And so you too were a motivational person at events. Well, I wasn't up. very motivating because I had an attitude. I, I think I, I wanted to move on and get my big break. If you had looked back then and then fast yeah. forwarded, like to where you are now I know. and sitting here and where you are. It's, it's interesting, right? Where I grew up, I grew up in Long Island. I went to NYU. Broadway is my bread and butter. butter. Um, so now I live in LA most of the time. So when I come back here, it's, it's just, there's a lot of emotions. Like, What does it feel like when you walk around or by Broadway energetically? Well, sometimes I feel a little sad because I'd like to be here more. I walk around just missing some of my friends. I love the community of theater. Your, your demo is very wide because you have these young... I have little girls and boys. I have moms who've grown up with me through Rent, Rent and Wicked and, and now Frozen, they have their kids. How many times do you think you've sang Let It Go or people have asked you to sing it? It's a lot, but I, I don't look a gift horse in the mouth. It's one of the greatest things that ever happened to me. I love it. What a gift to be able to connect with little kids, a young audience all the time, you know, um, in that way. It's just... The messaging of the song is so important. You know, it's not just a kind of thin pop song. It's a song about really finding your power and celebrating who you are. At any age, okay. those powerful three words. But the funny thing to me that you bring it up, let it go, it feels like it's like, let it go, like get over it, you know? But the song, let it go, is about let your power go. Release it into the world, your, your magic. It's interesting. I don't think people really have analyzed it enough. Yeah, but it's for every, really every person if you analyze it. Yeah. I think the parents are just sick of me by now, so like, please don't let me think about this. <laughs> I, I, a lot of people have that song in their head. And Frozen 3, is that a thing? I don't know. But you're ready to break out, let it go if they need you. Anytime I can, I can be 80 and play a blonde animated girl who's like 15, who's got amazing arms, by the way. I love that about her. You had mentioned that Wicked, the movie, is coming out, uh -huh. and that you were like, what am I doing in that movie now? I'm pretty transparent, so I'm not doing a great job of going like, yes, I wish them all the best. <laughs> I do wish them the best, and it will be an amazing movie. And the two women, Ariana and Cynthia, are friends of mine, and they're gonna be incredible. But to pretend like it doesn't hurt that, first of all, I'm probably, I'm just too old to play it, so I have to, I have to come to terms with that, which is hard, and just letting that go is really, it's hard when you create something, and then you don't get to see it all the way. Real. Would you have wanted to do that? Yeah, 
I was like, look, if I look a little old, you slap that green makeup on, you cover up a couple things, you put a little Vaseline on the lens, I look amazing. That's the honest answer. It's hard getting older and to acknowledge that I totally understand. I feel really conflicted about it because I know I'm better, I know I'm wiser, I know I'm a better mother having had a son later in my life. I know how all the things I have to offer and I know the things I've accomplished and yet I have those days where I look in the mirror and I see the age. We're about the same age and as we get older, it's like you never think it's going to happen to you but you really design the line not only based on your insecurities, because we all have insecurities, uh -huh. but for the woman who appreciates aging and wants to be stylish. I wanted the line to really be reflective of the things that I care about. And I got some great layering pieces, you know, because I just want to do a little coverage. And the fabrication is really important. So I know it was important to you for it to be super soft yeah, and yummy. It has to be, I didn't want to feel like the fashion is wearing me, you know? I'm lucky to have someone come in and do my hair for this interview and take two hours. But on my normal life, leave me to my own devices. I'm kind of, I can be a mess, you know? And so I just, I want stuff that just feels good and I feel comfortable and I want people to feel like, you know, that they shine in the clothes, that it's not some crazy design that's, that's overshadowing us, you know? We have so much to offer. What? What does Encore mean? And why did you choose that name? An Encore is when you've completed your show and people go, Encore, Encore, because <laughs> they want more. And it's just a wonderful feeling. It's a feeling of acceptance and love for who I am as an artist. And I wanted to sort of imbue that feeling to all of the other people out there and have them feel that way when it's really about enhancing who they are and letting them enjoy a spotlight. My signature piece, which was sort of the genesis of the whole line, which I drew on a little napkin one day and doodled, I wanted to find this this jumpsuit, like a onesie that you could wear to bed that felt super soft and you could wake up and throw on different shoes and go throughout the day and you feel great. So I'm calling it the swing jumpsuit because um, for anyone who doesn't know, in the theater, the swing... I didn't know which direction you were going there, so I'm glad that we're going this one way like that. The swing is the most respected person in the theater. They are the person that learns all of the rules. They dance, act, do everything and they know every track and they're on a moment's notice, they're ready to step in for anybody and they can play all of those roles and I've always just admired them so much. If you had a go-to party outfit, what would it be? The jumpsuits. Those you could dress up with a heel and some great jewelry and wear them out. So that's what I would do. Something that you felt good dancing in. Not a great dancer. You're not and a great dancer? No. People, when they call it, they say she's a triple threat. A triple threat means that you, you're a great singer, dancer, and actor. And I need tutoring whenever I have to dance. They put me in another room with the assistant choreographer and have to spend days teaching me eight counts that everyone learns in three seconds. Really? Yeah, my brain just, I don't know. No, 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 do you have a move? Is like there one <laughs> move that you know? Not... Yeah, it's this one. <laughs> <laughs> and then I date myself. I could do the moonwalk, actually. But I guess when you get out of here, we could have you moonwalk out of here. That's hysterical. I Let's I just see what you bear feet. This will be the tease of all teases. Whoa! I mean, that was pretty incredible. <laughs> You've done so many roles. Is there one that you'd like to revisit? Um, it's really hard to, to think that way. You kind of like live in them and love them and then move on from them. So I learned so much from Wicked, um, from Elphaba because I really need to learn how to step into my own power at that point in my life. So every day I was mirroring what the character was going through. But I would probably just say the role I'm, I love the most is being a mom. Yes! And you still get to do that. Yes, I do. <laughs> Thanks so much to Adina. That was such an honest and inspiring conversation, wasn't it? To shop her items and see more of Adina's line, scan the QR code below or head to today.com slash shop all day. And we should mention, Adina is a paid spokesperson for QVC, where I also have a line. Coming up next, my favorite buzzworthy products, including some nostalgic nods that are sure to make your party a hit. All that and more coming up only on Shop Today. To cover the news, you have to be in it. These are families trying to board those trains to Poland. I also want to get home. You'll get home. Every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. 
Hallie Jackson Now. Weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. To cover the news, you have to be in it. These are families trying to board those trains to Poland. I also want to get home. You'll get home. Every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Women's basketball has been systematically held back. After 49 years of Title IX, we still have work to do. In Their Court, a podcast from NBC News and NBC Sports that goes inside the issues of inequality in women's sports. Listen now. Allie Jackson now. Weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson. Streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Welcome back to SHAP Today. This is one of my favorite segments because today we're celebrating the ultimate summer bash and we've got the buzziest finds to help you make a splash this season. First up, it's not a party without party food, right? And bringing back old trends is on trend right now. So we've got some delicious sweet treats that will bring you right back down memory lane. Remember snow cones? This vintage countertop snow cone maker is such a great way for kids and adults to enjoy a cold summer treat. It also includes two reusable plastic snow cone holders along with an ice scoop to easily serve them. It retails for $59.99 and comes in blue, pink, red, or white. This is sure to be a hit at your next get together. The next item that is a must have, another fun party treat, Nostalgia Classic Retro Countertop Cotton Candy Maker. Make your own fluffy cotton candy in just minutes. The cotton candy maker comes in aqua and retails for $49.99. And bonus, for both these treats, ingredient kits are also available. So check those out so you're ready to go. Next up, another exclusive deal only for Shop Today viewers. Keep your guests entertained and also hydrated with the Aduro Amplify Chill LED Light Show Ice Bucket Speaker. It's fun and functional. The ice bucket will help you beat the heat and the speaker with integrated Bluetooth connection will bring the beats. Use your phone to change the color of the ice bucket. A personalized light show right in your backyard. It retails for $99.99. The deal is $35. That's 65% off. Speaking of party drinks, check out this cool coffee option for your caffeine-loving company. New Range Coffee Black Cold Brew, Cold Brew Coffee Plus, and Cold Brew Latte Cans are a great individual way to keep the party going when you need a little kick. Plus, they look cute too. The Black Cold Brew is a Guatemalan dark roast and the Cold Brew Coffee Plus has a chocolatey smooth flavor. The Cold Brew Latte is vegan with a coconut cream infused coffee. Get 12 cans of each variety for $48 or subscribe and save 15%. Now that you have coffee on the menu, why not go a step further and make an on-trend espresso martini with these Libby Cosmopolitan Martini Party Glasses. You could also elevate your appetizers or desserts by serving them in these cute glasses. Plus, the brand says they are dishwasher safe. I just love easy party cleanup. And get this, they are sold in a set of 12 for $32. Well, that's it for my buzzworthy party picks. Let's recap the fun one more time. We have the Nostalgia Vintage Countertop Snow Cone Maker and Cotton Candy Maker, the Aduro Amplify Chill LED Light Show Ice Bucket Speaker, the New Range Coffee and Latte Cans, and the Libby Cosmopolitan Martini Party Glasses. To shop these products, scan the QR code below for instant access to all of my party picks. Featured on today's show, you can also text SHOP to 34318 or head to today.com slash shop all day. And that wraps up this episode of Shop Today. I can't believe it's over, but I loved shopping and celebrating the ultimate summer bash with all of you. I want to send an extra special thank you to the talented Adina Menzel for sharing her fun film and Broadway memories. And who could forget 
those killer dance moves. I hope you found great ways to enhance your summer and make your own special memories celebrating with the ones you love. I hope you'll tune in later this summer for incredible deals and items you need for the perfect fall season. You won't want to miss these products or the exclusive deals. Until then, wishing you all a very happy and healthy summer. See you next time. We are throwing a family food festival. We got Al, we got Carson, we got Jack Daly. They love cooking with their kids. Yeah. They've got some great recipes to share. Uh, just in time for the big day. Okay. You may have already caught Al and his son Nick cooking it up in their home kitchen on their social media show called What We're Cooking. And Carson's son Jackson has culinary skills too, just like his parents. Al and Carson's passion for cooking come from their own dads, Albert Lincoln Roker and Richard Caruso, who both love to grill and eat. Oh, guys, now we can't wait. All right, let's, who are we gonna start with? What, what do you say we start with Al? What are you making? Yeah. Well, guys, uh, doing something kind of Mediterranean. I'm doing uh, doing lamb ribs, uh, and I love these. I, I, I met a, a, a shepherd believe it or not, a guy who is uh, a shepherd in Virginia named Craig Rogers, and he turned me on to these. And it's a cheaper cut of beef, uh, of lamb, I should say. So basically, you take yeah. these ribs. Ooh, they come cut already. Check with your butcher. They'll be fantastic. And and you can do a rub. Like, we've got uh, any kind of Mediterranean spice, including uh, lemon zest. We've got some cinnamon. We've got, we've got uh, sugar, salt, a, a, a little bit of everything in here. And you're just going to rub it on very, really very generously. Mm -hmm. Now, I also like to use, you can also use a, a commercial one. I, this one, Hasty Bake, is good. Uh, anything that has kind of a Mediterranean flavor. And and basically, you just cake this on. It's simplicity unto itself because it's just like making regular ribs. It's going to be low and slow. You get your, you don't want to put these directly on the heat. So what I've done is, if you can see over here, the, the main part of the grill is over 400 degrees, but this this side is only about 250, 225, and you're going to put the lamb ribs in here, and you move them around every, oh, I'd say 30 minutes. You don't even have to baste them because they're fairly fatty, and they come out looking something like this. Wow. What? Oh, my God. Now, wow. Oh, yes. Hey, oh, Roker, yes. Roker, oh, yes. If you're oh, not, yes. If you're not a lamb guy, yes, sir. can you swap out? Could you use pork or beef? If you're, you could swap out for for beef or pork, but everybody does beef or pork ribs. Do something different, and then you want to pair that with a nice asparagus. Uh, okay, uh, and you're just gonna. And some people uh, peel them. I cut them off at the right there at the base. They get a little shorter, and then you just take some olive oil. You pour that on. Mm. Very simply, a little mm. salt, I don't even salt. Like little asparagus. pepper, uh -huh. and then you, you, I know you don't like, a lot of people, Jack, don't like asparagus, <laughs> but once you grill it, and it only takes about five or six okay. minutes, and it yeah. comes out looking like mm -hmm. this, and Looks it's really good. tasty, oh. it's crisp, it's crunchy. Oh. And you just, you're gonna, you're gonna love that. Uh -huh. It's really Ooh, good. Like and God, by the way, guys, you can, you Makes can do this if you don't have your grill going. You can put them in your oven and <laughs> let it go again, uh -huh. 225, 250 for mm. about three hours. All right, there's Mr. Roker's recipe. Wow. That, was, that was fantastic, buddy. I wish I could, <laughs> wish I could take a bite. Uh, Carson, so, so thank, we you. Got, thank you, Carson thank you. Carson and Jack are up now, and you guys yeah. have some special taste testers in the kitchen. Is that right? We do. We got the girls over here. We're gonna bring them in in a minute. But how do you follow that up? Uncle Al is the Yoda to our Skywalker when it comes to cooking. So we're going to pair those delicious <laughs> lamb ribs with something just a little bit different than the asparagus. We're going to do a like a, a, a Mexican uh, corn, basically, off the cob. And uh, let's just get right into it. We've got Siri here on our second cam. So, Bingo, if you can come around. We're going to take – I'm using canned corn. You can use canned corn or frozen corn. You want to dry off the corn a little bit so that way we can brown it up. Uh -huh. We're going to pop it in the skillet here. You can hear it. It's sizzling. Mm -hmm. We'll put it here just to brown it all up. We'll get that corn nice and brown. Uh, by the magic of TV, we'll walk back over here. We already have that corn brown right here. And then we're going to add to it – this is a little Mexican crema and mayonnaise concoction. That's going to go down in the corn oh, just wow. like that. 
Then we're going to take our spices. We've got uh, cumin, paprika, chili powder, and some cayenne. That's going to go in there. We've got some lime juice is going to go in there. Some fresh cilantro. This is the magic right here, the cilantro. Mm -hmm. And then a little bit of garlic, too, guys. Mm. All that's going to go in. We're going to mix this all up. We've got the graphics department dessert coming up next. So that's going to be that. A little salt, a little, little pepper. pepper. We're going to top, top it with some yeah. uh, Cotilla cheese on top and a little lime zest. Mm. Boom. That is what we're talking about, Yum. guys. Look at that. That's that nice. That with the lamb ribs is going nice. to be, that's going to be delicious. All right. Oh. Uh, Jack D, go for it. That's beautiful. It. Okay. Okay. So what are you making? I'm making like a s'mores dip. So for someone who like doesn't know how to cook mm. and loves s'mores, it's like s'mores nachos. Oh. So you take... Reese's oh, peanut butter really? cups Reese's. and put them down on a flat iron skillet. We do a lot of s'mores. This is like a yeah, constructed version. So. so you put um, them down on mm -hmm. a flat iron skillet. Then you top them with marshmallows. Mm. So. Okay, I'm just going to help out. Wow. Mm -hmm. Sorry, we're going to top it. Just like a TV. Yep. And then what are you going to do with this? You're going to pop, pop this in the and oven? And then you throw it in the oven for about uh, 450. Four fifty. Uh, 450 for about like four minutes. All right, okay. so we're going to do that. We're going to pop it in the oven and then again, mask of TV. We've got what the beauty that? product. Look at oh that. My wow. Oh my gosh. Look at that. Girls, oh, come here. Wow. That is and fantastic. Then, Go ahead, Jack. And then you break up some graham crackers mm -hmm. as like dip, like chips. Yeah, so you're going to just basically uh -huh. dip it. And then personally, I also oh, like gosh. to have Oreos. Of course. And, of course. Um, <laughs> and another book cream. Get in there, guys. That's so awesome. Wait, dunk that. a, get in there. I want to see. Yeah, so come on. Let's see what it looks like. It. That looks dunk good. Bingo, can you get in there? Oh, yeah, look at that. Yeah. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that bite right there. Uh, That's delicious. S'mores for breakfast yeah. all the day. Later. Yeah, oh, we want to say happy Father's Day to all you fathers out there, all you father figures out there for that for that much. And um, That's right. I've had two incredible fathers. Um, uh, Al, you've been blessed as well. Uh, I love talking about uh, my dad with you and Craig when we do our Father's Day thing. So happy Father's Day to you fellas. And I want to tell my children I love you guys so much. They're not listening, but that's okay. And to Bingo, who often is like a father figure to me as well. Happy Father's Day. Siri Daly on the second yeah. camera. Indeed. And Goldie in the house somewhere too, I'm sure. All oh, yeah, right. Goldie's here too. Daly, we want to say thanks. Thanks to you, Al, for all the recipes and more. Be sure to check out today.com slash food. Ali Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Ali Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. The midterms are here. It's time to plan your vote. We'll provide everything you need to know to successfully cast your ballot. Just select any state you want to learn about for the primary or general election, and you'll instantly get voting rules, see the next big deadline, and learn how to take action for your plan. Voting rules have changed since 2020, and those rules vary from state to state. So it's time to get planning for 2022. Visit NBCNews.com slash plan your vote today. At 73, Prince Charles is still waiting for the job that is his birthright. Do we want Charles? Do we want a monarchy? I'm Keir Simmons, and we'll take on these questions and more in our new podcast, Born to Rule. Listen now. Women's basketball has been systematically held back. After 49 years of Title IX, we still have work to do. In Their Court, a podcast from NBC News and NBC Sports that goes inside the issues of inequality in women's sports. Listen now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Now Tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. A surprise trip to New Orleans changed Jason Santos's life. He fell in love with the flavors and the food. That's right. It inspired his first cookbook, Buttermilk and Bourbon, which what is also combo. the name of his Boston restaurant. Today he's got a kicked up brunch dish that would be perfect for dad. Yes. I think my husband would have a heart attack if I made something so lovely. I think you should. I want to learn this. how to do it's it. It's super simple. We're going to do a deviled egg toast, a nice, beautiful focaccia with some country ham, some pickled hot peppers. Yeah. Um, and we're going to go with the pickled peppers. Super okay. easy. Beautiful peppers. You can pick them in the beginning of the season, pickle them, they'll last in your fridge forever. That's such a good idea. Yeah. So these, just a little bit of oil. You can use sweet peppers or spicy peppers. 
And then what we'll do is we'll just put these on. Plop those. Bags yeah, we're gonna in. char them up. You want them to be still raw, but nice and charred. So then so we're gonna pickle them. How long do you them. keep them on here? Probably four or five minutes. They get a nice sort of caramelization. You can see here. And once they're done, we're gonna take them off, cool them, and then we're gonna sort of dice them up. Okay. And then here I have some cider vinegar, a little bit of water, garlic, salt, and black pepper. Mm -hmm. So this is sort of our pickling solution. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we're gonna bring that to a boil. We will dump it over the peppers. Are you a pickling fan? Do you pickle a lot? I am. I'm not crazy about it. Yeah. Like, as far as what we do, I'm more particular. And I think peppers, really, the heat sort of balances the heat a little bit. Mm -hmm. So pickled peppers here, vinegar, put it in the fridge two days. Once it's out of the fridge, we're going to drain off the vinegar, and we're going to add some olive oil. And wow. this will sort of preserve them and be like a marinated pepper grade for like an yeah. pasta. Then they're good for... All Indefinitely in your yes. fridge, yeah. So you could do this with tomatoes or whatever you have in your garden. So some spicy these, peppers here. This is good if you want to try one. Spicy? They definitely have a little bit of a kick for sure. Okay, I'm but the, the vinegar and the oil is really good. It I'll kind of preserves know. them. Let me know how spicy. And then Level we're going to get up here to this beautiful deviled egg set. <laughs> Are you okay? Ooh, fire extinguisher. You need I water? I personally or milk? have never met a deviled egg that I haven't liked. So okay. this is sort of my version of a deviled egg. Okay, if I love the deviled egg. Good? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's good. So, deviled egg, country ham, some char grilled butter, beautiful eggs. So 10 minutes boiling water, drop mm -hmm. in the eggs. I put a little bit of salt mm -hmm. and a little vinegar, and that helps to sort of the shell dislocate from the protein oh, of so the so egg. Vinegar, this is how yeah. you uh, boil, boil I know. egg. Well, right. I do so it every year egg. for Easter. Okay. Day one culinary school, right? Yeah. Boiled. <laughs> Ice water, most important thing. Why? What is the ice so the too? ice stops the cooking process and also shocks the egg. That way, the and shell the will kind of come off the egg, makes it way Where easier. Where were you to on peel. Easter? I needed this. I think back in the day, our moms would just pour it under cold yeah, water like, in the sink, and it made it really difficult. She didn't even put it under cold water. I didn't. Yeah, so I mean, you could be peeling that for a month. You know? I, I'm but this still makes peeling it really it. easier. Yeah. So beautiful eggs here. So I'm just going to dice these up, okay. not overcooked. Okay, so and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make this great deviled egg mayonnaise. So okay. same thing as a great condiment. Mm -hmm. You can use it for whatever you like. So mayonnaise. Okay, mm. plop it in there. Oh. We're gonna mix it. Worcestershire, oh. hot sauce, mm. lemon juice, and Dijon. So if you could just whisk that up for me, I that would be great. I everything that you just put in there. And so we have the diced deviled eggs, and down here I have a little salad we're gonna garnish the focaccia with. So okay. once that's all mixed. Is that the dressing? Or that's what? the dressing, this, okay. yeah. So this is something you can keep in your fridge as a sort of great Mayonnaise dressing. Mm. So this is all the flavors of deviled egg. Normally you take out the yolk, yes. puree it, pipe it back in. So we have all that mixed. It's and then kind we're of down like the lazy here. woman's deviled egg, which I, I really like. Past you and yeah, yeah. So here, focaccia, nice and grilled. Mm. I'm gonna take my egg salad and yeah. my country ham. So you could okay. use prosciutto, serrano ham, mm -hmm. country ham, whatever you like. Mm. Yeah. Put the egg salad on. Mm -hmm. You could cut this smaller for a nice little canopy. Wait, what's that? That's a char grilled butter, yeah. So oh, we're gonna smear that yeah. over the top. Mm. What's this other thing over here, this little beauty? So these are baby back ribs. Oh. Same pickled peppers we use, a little Carolina mustard, and these are unbelievable Cajun Bloody Marys. This was That's one of those over. This, yeah. oh, you want a Bloody Mary? I do. Why not? Oops, there goes the garnish. Yeah. All right, Jason, really thank you so you. much. Yeah. And this would make any dad's Sunday dream. Mm. Yeah. All Delicious. right, to get these recipes, go to today.com slash food. We're back, Today Food. And here's a public service announcement, ladies. Father's Day. This Sunday. You won't forget. Okay. So if you're looking for a meal that's sure to impress your dad, get your grill ready because we've got just what you need. Darnell Ferguson is the chef and owner of Super Chef Restaurants. He's also a very proud dad of eight kids, some of whom are joining him this morning. Darnell, thanks for having us. First of all, do us a favor. Introduce us to the kids that are there and then tell us what you love, uh, why you love cooking with them so much. All right, so we have Legend Ali right here. You want to say hi? Legend. Okay, we got Nelly, who just, he just eats. He doesn't cook. <laughs> uh, we got Lamaya, Lola, Trinity, my wife, Tatata, and Nori, the baby, right over here. Wow. And as you can tell, Legend, who's the chef, likes to walk away. But, yeah, so today we're going to be doing some grilled corn. I got Legend, who is growing up to be a chef, right? <laughs> we got our chimichurri shrimp right here. Ooh. This was supposed to be something super easy that the kids can do and the fathers can kind of sit down, but it's a little better than like hot dogs. Right. There you go. He wants to try. Darnell, there you what, go. what is it about this, th this recipe that, that you like, especially for Father's Day? Well, it's, it's creative. It's easy as ever. So it doesn't take a long time to prep. And it's something you can trust the kids. See, he's just playing around. It's something you can trust the kids <laughs> to do without actually, like, getting hurt. It's a very easy dish. 
fun, and it's different, man. This Father's Day, we got to turn it up, man. The COVID, fathers need a special treat because we had to be home with those kids 24-7. Hey, man. <laughs> we need something special now. <laughs> and, and you know you have so eight kids when right you're... here with the chimichurri. You know you've got eight kids when you're letting one of them just, you know... Yes, just based right on the grill there. I noticed the corn has the husk on. Did, did you... I mean, how, did, how does it cook? Do you keep the husk on and then peel it back? Yes, yeah, so we soaked the corn for 24 hours in water, cooked it with the husk on, then took the husk off of it, and I actually got the grill marks that I wanted on there. And then we'll take it over to the table... And I'll let the girls show you how to make it to some really good street corn over here. So Don't Trinity is going to, yes. That, uh, why, why soak it for 24 hours? What does that do to it? You don't want the husk to burn up on you. Oh. you can go ahead and start, girls. You don't want that husk to burn up on you. So we're putting a little garlic aioli on top mm. of the corn now. You can go ahead, Maya. We got a little smoked paprika going mm. on. <laughs> Legend, there's a cheese. Maya's got a heavy hand. There's a cheese. What kind of cheese is that? This is Parmesan. Usually you'll see Cotiga, but I want a little more flavor. So we got a little Parmesan cheese. Mm -hmm. Lola's putting some cilantro on there for me right now. And then this is the star of the show, the candy bacon. Oh. Everybody loves bacon. You know, that is it. You want to oh, go ahead and put some amazing. tomatoes on top, girls? It's Roker's favorite food there. Just throw them on there. There you go. Throw them on top of the uh, shrimp. <laughs> It's just hands and there you go. all over the place. They work so well together, too, yeah, your fine. kids. It is something they can all do. Darnell, how long did yeah. that shrimp uh, barbecue for? Well, you cook the shrimp on each side for about five minutes on the grill. We got the chimichurri sauce, which is the cilantro, the parsley, the mm. habaneros, and everything just blended up. It's very simple. Season it. Cook it on both sides. You just want to base it inside of the um, chimichurri sauce. And then it's the street corn. Really fun, easy, something the kids can't mess up. You know, I like a little more garlic aioli if you ask me so i could just go right back on there yep. put a little more on top of there there you go he wants can to try, try? legend <laughs> darnell do any of your kids jump off that waterfall into the pool oh yes they're all they're so anxious to get in the pool right now so that's half the issue we have of containing them but they see water so <laughs> this is a, a great snapshot of father's Day oh yeah right yeah, it is. yeah it is <laughs> yes it's well, we so like you say, this is an easy thing to do for Father's Day. It is something different. It's not just hot dogs and hamburgers, yeah. you know. Well, of course it's easy for you, Darnell. Look at how many helpers you have. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to do any work. Yeah. yeah. Out of Full free time labor. Crew here, man. Yeah. Full time it, crew working. Yeah. You wear it well, man. You work hard. Just just grill and chill. Darnell, thanks so much. Happy Father's Day to you. Oh, thank you. Same to everybody over there. All right, cool. Thank you. And, and, and say goodbye no to your wife for us as well and the kids. All right, check out that recipe today, .com slash food. All right, SG, uh, that is all the time we have on a Friday morning. Good to see you. Oh, but we have, we have time for you to explain your Father's Day blazer. Oh, real oh. quick. Delano picked it out two years ago and gave me, uh, gave me this gift for Father's Day, so I wear it once a year oh. the Friday before. He I so. thought he was going to the Kentucky Derby. He's, I, I, I'm going to do that, too, in this jacket <laughs> next year. He is watching, so good morning, son. Thank yeah. you, Savannah. At 73, Prince Charles is still waiting for the job that is his birthright. Do we want Charles? Do we want a monarchy? I'm Keir Simmons, and we'll take on these questions and more in our new podcast, Born to Rule. Listen now. To cover the news, you have to be in it. These are families trying to board those trains to Poland. I also want to get home. You'll get home. Every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. We're here to start conversations about the big things happening in our world. Because it's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson. Streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. We'll meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. You were still in Kiev. Could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Who is this? What would you like to see from the federal government to keep Buffalo safe? If there is legislation brought to you to ban contraception, would you sign it? What should be focused on that could reduce inflation and avoid a recession? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. What would you like to see from the federal government to keep Buffalo safe? If there is legislation brought to you to ban contraception, would you sign it? 
What should be focused on that could reduce inflation and avoid a recession? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Allie Jackson now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Welcome back. Ahead of Father's Day, we wanted to cook up Al and Craig's ideal Father's Day meal. And when we asked them separately what their dream dish would be, they both said the same thing. Ribeye steak and grilled veggies. So here to whip up our favorite guy's favorite meal is chef and host of Laura in the Kitchen, Laura Vitale. Hi, Laura. All right, guys, so I know some of Al and Craig's favorites include a ribeye steak, some vegetables, mac and cheese. So I wanted to take all of those and just put a really nice, easy spin on them and make them really family friendly. Let's start with the steak, which I'm gonna marinate and then you grill or you can sear, totally up to you. And we're gonna top it on a beautiful cob salad. It makes it go really far. So let's talk steak. I've got a boneless ribeye here. Now, if you were serving just one or two people and you wanted to do something really special, you could do a bone in, but when we're trying to feed a family, you get more bang for your buck if you're doing it boneless because you buy it by the pound, you know? So let's get going on the marinade. It's really important that the marinade uh, and your steak are in a container that's small enough so that the steak is sort of surrounded in the marinade and not that the marinade is sort of all over the place so much that the steak isn't even touching it. You need soy sauce and olive oil, light soy, Worcestershire sauce, a little vinegar, a little steak seasoning, including some salt and pepper. And then you need some onion and some garlic. You're gonna take this mixture, right? You're gonna smoosh it around. And then you're gonna take your steak, okay? And you're gonna just add that in there. You see how it's literally sitting on the marinade? You're gonna leave it like this for about six to eight hours, halfway through, you're gonna come in and you're gonna flip the steak, make sure you cover it flip it so that it's coating the other side and it's going to be the most succulent and delicious steak ever. So I already have one ready because I can't take you outside grilling. I know it's rough, but imagine you take that steak and you grill it to perfection and I'll show you what it looks like because you're going to absolutely love it. It looks a little something like this. You're going to take your steak. I'm going to take a cutting board. If you hear that, that's my little chachi. That's my little baby. She's not so little anymore, but you know, I like mine a little bit more on the medium rare side, but you can cook it as much or as little as you want. And then we're gonna use this to top our beautiful salad. Let me show you over here what our salad looks like, okay? I've got your usual suspects for a cob salad, avocado, soft boiled egg, I've got some bacon, some onion, tomatoes. And now what I've done is I've went ahead and grilled some delicious asparagus and some beautiful Brussels sprouts, just olive oil, salt and pepper, a little bit of garlic. Then you take your steak, you're gonna top that right on top. And then instead of doing croutons, I went ahead and roasted some baby, like tiny pieces of potato. It gives you texture, it gives you crunch. It absorbs some of the dressing. Now for the dressing, I went ahead and made a really beautiful green goddess dressing. It's super simple and easy. Dipped my fingers in that. The ingredients for that are simple. Mayo, lemon, garlic, onion, a little bit of parsley, tarragon, and a couple pieces of anchovies. You blend those in a blender. You have a gorgeous green goddess dressing to go with that. Let's go ahead and make the pasta pie. You've got some cooked pasta, any cooked pasta of your choice. I lost my fork, I lost my fork, hold on. Here it is. Any, any pasta of your choice, already cooked, right? You're gonna, to that, you're gonna add eggs, six eggs and about a half a cup of whole milk. I'm gonna add some shredded Monterey Jack and cheddar blend, parmigiano, and some cooked bacon. You're gonna mix that all together you're gonna mix it all together. Then what you do is you take this mixture, you're gonna to go to the stove, I've got a boss over here. You're gonna to go to the stove and you're gonna add this mixture in an oven proof, like nine and a half inch pan that's been oiled. And you're gonna add that in there, let it cook for about a minute. And then you transfer this in a 400 degree oven for 20 minutes until it looks a little something like this, and it is absolutely divine. In an Italian household, we love pasta pie. We love it cold, hot, out of the fridge, you name it. 
And for dessert, which I'm going to show you on the gram, I went ahead and made a strawberry shortcake ice cream cake. So that's everything. It's a real feast and I know you're going to love it. Laura, thank you. That looks so good. And I now know what I'll be making Brian for Father's Day too. For this recipe and more, head over to today.com slash food. Women's basketball has been systematically held back. After 49 years of Title IX, and we still have work to do. In Their Court, a podcast from NBC News and NBC Sports that goes inside the issues of inequality in women's sports. Listen now. To cover the news, you have to be in it. These are families trying to board those trains to Poland. I also want to get home. You'll get home. Every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Today is now a podcast. Available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. What would you like to see from the federal government to keep Buffalo safe? If there is legislation brought to you to ban contraception, would you sign it? What should be focused on that could reduce inflation and avoid a recession? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Ukraine and Russia. Could you help me understand what's going on? So to help make sense of it, we've created a newscast just for them. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson. Streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Hallie Jackson Now. Weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Oh, I love the music already. This morning on Today Food, it is grilling and chilling with us, the dailies. I love this. I can't believe this is on TV right now. Siri and I, I put our heads like together. We want to come, figure out a way to combine. I'm as passionate about music as everybody knows, as you are food. I mean, exactly. yep. you are crazy about food. I'm crazy about music. So we're doing a theme. We wanted to be outside, but it's raining. raining. We're doing Jamaica. Really good. Jamaica in June. Um, we've gone to Jamaica. I love it. It's my favorite place. When we moved to New York, the Caribbean is much more accessible to us yes. than it is in California. So this, this sort of encompasses Aww, everything we love in life. So we try and replicate that at our house. And of course, it's the food and the cocktails, mm. but it's also about the music. So what I've done is I've curated a playlist that's at today.com. So while you make this meal, play the playlist. It's great. Oh. It's got this song, 96 Degrees in the Shade. This is Third World, great band. I'm playing Hollywood Bowl on July 7th. Steel Pulse, one of my favorite reggae bands of all time. They're English. Check Earth Crisis and True Democracy are two records that have saved my life. We got, of course, Bob Marley. I threw a Sublime song in there. And then you have to yes. go back to Toots and the Maytals. That's yes. OG reggae from the 60s. They started the whole thing off. So there's a good little playlist. Put that on while you're doing this. What's on the Absolutely. menu? Absolutely. It'll set the vibe. All right. So we're going to make some rum punch. Yeah. We're going to start with that. Then some yeah. jerk chicken and some skewered summer vegetables. So the rum punch is easy. Punch. It's just a coconut rum, a light rum, and also an apricot brandy. I want to shout out my brother-in-law, Dylan. This is actually his recipe. We're doing both <laughs> pineapple juice and orange juice. Just throw it all in there. She's sunbathing. She's all, all right. Good. We're just yeah. going to mix this, this up. And I always make the drink first so you can enjoy the cocktail while yeah. we're going to strain it out, too. Can you do these in a big batch? Uh, yes. Absolutely. And the best part is the little floater of dark rum. Yeah, we're going to do a top. dark rum okay. floater on the top. But like that what we you. made for Jenna is a mocktail version, so you just omit all of the alcohol and yes. add, like, some cherry grenadine or pomegranate juice just to give it that fun. So rum punch, is, that's where you get off in yeah. Jamaica. If you're, I mean, that's where you set, you got to have it in your hand, and it, it gets you off. So what, we're doing jerk so chicken. We're, now we're going to make jerk chicken. I have some ginger we gotta in fly, here. So we're we're like gonna, already yeah, out of time. We're going to make the... But honestly, the cocktail's kind of the most important. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, where's mine, by the, the way? Jerk so, um, the jerk spice is interesting. What is in the spices? The pepper is probably the best part. You either get a habanero or a scotch bonnet, but don't touch it with your fingers because that'll really hurt your eyes. Um, so we have uh, Chinese five spice. That's right. probably oh, my that's favorite spice cinnamons. in the whole thing. There's cinnamon, there's allspice, there's cayenne, there's paprika, um, brown sugar. You want to throw that in there? Yeah, people are intimidated to make a, a jerk bit. sauce. Because you think it's a lot, like the spice, but it's not. Just right. follow the directions no. and throw Literally it all in Literally throw it on a processor, process it up for like... You know, and Craig, you can smooth. jerk anything. We're jerking chicken, but you there can you jerk go. steak. You can do put it on anything. But here right. it is. Jerk it out. And Sorry. the the key is to try to marinate it overnight if you can. Mm -hmm. An hour is fine, but like the, you really want to get the um, the seasons all like marrying together and whatnot. Yummy. So yeah, then throw it on the grill. You can do it inside if it's raining. When you're in Jamaica here. and you uh, come out of a bar, or you know, this is like if you're in New York, the hot dogs are on the mm -hmm. side of the road. Yeah. You food. get jerk chicken right street foods right off the side, yeah. and it's delicious. And this is, you know, so while he does that, I'm going to make 15 minutes on a side on the chicken. Yeah, exactly. 165 like degrees. Charred. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So now yeah. I'm going to um, make yeah. a marinade for the vegetables. So we have lemon really juice, good. olive oil, garlic, uh, mm. salt, and then One jerk minute? seasoning, okay. which you can just get. <laughs> 
um, at the store. And we will pour See, that. Like right now, that's Toots and the Maytals rocking out. I got to get my cocktail. Now, I'm if, punch. if you're inside, no like problem we are, on. and you are going to skewer your vegetables, soak them in water. When I flew to Jamaica on Air Jamaica, <laughs> our, oh, an, 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 amazing an story. engine went out over Cuba, and I kid wow. you not, the, the pilot goes, Am I no problem, man? <laughs> one thing I learned we can fly on one engine, we'll be in Jamaica soon, man. Like, I was literally. Luckily, not there for that flight because I would have. <laughs> oh, it was vomited. fun. It's the best. We gotta go. Uh, the playlist at today.com slash food. Check it out. Third hour today's up next. Check out your local news. Thank you, Siri. God bless Cheers. you all. Happy so eating. Great. So good. Cheers. Great Ooh, the answer's calling you. I'm Craig Melvin, and today we are celebrating dads. Three years ago, we launched our Dad's Got This series as a, a way to shine the light on fathers across the country who are making a difference in their children's lives. And today, in honor of Father's Day, we're bringing you just a few of my favorite stories. These dads have shown me a thing or two in my own parenthood journey, and I hope that you can learn something as well. We start with a few dads that you might have seen while scrolling the internet or social media, gaining followers on TikTok and Instagram for their unique skill set as dads. Dad Alex Zane and his daughter Matilda delight fans weekly with picture remakes of famous movies. He says his favorite part of the recreation is just being with his daughter and showing her the joy of being creative. Take a look. Oh, yeah. That's perfect. This is great. Alex Zane, a Massachusetts-based lawyer, is very clear about the fact that he's not a professional photographer, but what is quite oh, clear yeah. is that he's always been a big movie nerd. Yeah, I've always been a movie buff. And so I love being a parent. I love creativity. I love movies. So this was combining everything that I like. Alex is talking about Tot for Tot remakes. It's a photo project turned viral Instagram account that he started with his four-year-old daughter, Matilda, in March of 2020. The father-daughter duo started posting photo recreations of famous movie scenes with Matilda and her stuffed fox standing in for famous actors. Take me back to the early days of, of the pandemic in 2020. What was it like in your house? Work had closed, the courthouses had shut down, and my wife continued to work throughout all of it. So I handled the kids who both couldn't go to school anymore and quickly realized just how hard it was to fill up an entire day with two young kids. One day, desperate for new activities to do with the kids, Alex decided to have an indoor car wash with one of Matilda's toy cars. And at one point, Matilda jumped on top of the car and started surfing. And instead of jumping and trying to get her off of it, protect her, I had a vision of Teen Wolf, the Michael J. Fox movie from the 80s, and I said to my friend, can you make her look like Teen Wolf? And my friend responded within seconds saying, I've been waiting my whole life for this. And... <laughs> Two years on and 118 posts later, with the help of that same friend, professional photographer Andrew Kelly, they're still at it. The best part about working with my dad is because I get to dress up. When I grow up, I want to be an actor. Steve Kornacki. At the NBC's own political reporter, Steve Kornacki, and his famous khakis even made Alex and Matilda's Instagram feed. I surprised Alex with a special video message from the man himself. Hey, Alex and Matilda, I, I, oh I'm kind of blown away by this. By the way, Matilda, I think you pull the look off better than I do. I love seeing that you spent time together, that you've been spending time together so creatively. Oh, that's really amazing. That's so cool. What have been two or three of your personal favorites? We did The Shining. She did not see it, but it was easy to explain the plot to her in that, you know, a dad's stuck in a building. He can't leave. He's with his family and he slowly loses his mind. And my last one would probably be bridesmaids only because I have a memory of her then refusing to take off the wedding dress and keeping it on for about two days straight. <laughs> it seems to me that this isn't just about recreating famous movie scenes. It, it seems like it might be just as much about a father connecting with his daughter. That's the best part. 
it, it really is about showing her just how we can connect doing something creative and also the hope that you know 10 years five years she looks back at these photos and she's like oh that was that was pretty cool or pretty fun of my dad to do this with me like look at what we did together you are pretty cool alex i've enjoyed this matilda and i have a surprise for you oh that's fantastic <laughs> she's ready she's ready well done matilda well done All right, so what was everybody's favorite and least favorite part of the day? Meet Jose Rolone, a Brooklyn-based wedding planner and single dad of three who goes by the username NYC Gay Dad in viral videos on TikTok and Instagram. You're making me clean again? <sighs> Don't make me destroy you. Parenting three kids during the pandemic gave him the creative spark that pushed him to the platform. LGBTQ rights have been going on for quite some time. But I do think in the parenting space, we really sort of still are at the forefront of that. This was a platform to be able to highlight LGBTQ plus family here that is doing the same things that you do. Was there a conscious decision to, to try and use it to break down barriers and, and shatter myths and preconceived ideas about what fatherhood is? You know, I grew up with a father who was all about like machismo and, you know, you couldn't talk about your feelings. And so I think one of the things I wanted to highlight too on social media is as a man, you can be vulnerable. Growing up, Jose always dreamed of one day becoming the kind of dad that he wished he'd had. You had this killer smile, beautiful eyes. After marrying his husband, Tim Merrill in 2010, it seemed like he was one step closer to making that dream a reality. When and how did you decide that uh, you were ready to be parents? When Tim and I met, I think he revealed to me on the third date that he did not want to have children. And I was like, oh man, we're in trouble here, right? Because I knew that I always wanted to have kids. But something happened right after we got married and we were outside of a coffee shop. And he said to me, so I want you to know that I've been open to being open to having children. I lost it. Through surrogacy, the pair welcomed their son Avery into the world in March of 2013. Tim ended up being this really incredible father. So when we hit two months, he was walking out of the room and was holding Avery in his arms. And he's like, babe, I think we should have more children. I was like, what? And we went for it. The unexpected happened. Their surrogate became pregnant with twins. But 11 weeks into the pregnancy, while his husband Tim was on a trip in Pennsylvania, Jose got a phone call that would change everything. And I got a call uh, from the Pennsylvania uh, Police Department. I get on the phone and uh, the detective told me that he had passed away uh, the night before. Uh, and it was a heart attack uh, in his sleep. There was so much running through my head just not only having in that moment dealing with the grieving and feeling numb, but my mind also went to, we're 11 weeks pregnant. My son just lost his father. What if something were to happen to me? I didn't want to leave him alone in this world. So I made a decision in that moment to not only follow through the pregnancy, uh, but I actually announced that we were pregnant while giving my husband's eulogy at a church in front of three, 400 people. Here we are, seven years later. Now my son is eight, my girls will be seven next week. I mean, do you ever take a step back and you look at your life and you think, sweet God, what am I doing? Three children, single dad. Yeah, look, this ride has been wild. And I think we all go through phases of grieving. Nothing is permanent. I'm aware that this can shift like that. So for me, it's really vital that I stay in this moment and I appreciate it and I'm grateful and I keep moving forward with my kids in the best way that I can so that when those moments come where s stuff goes down, hopefully I'll be ready. How did you get into sewing? It started by seeing my sister sew. She would take sweatshirts and hoodies and replace the sleeves with the African and car fabric. I was like, I think I want to do this. And then just decided to just go for it. And go for it, he has. Philadelphia native and self-taught dressmaker, Michael Gardner has been sewing dresses and outfits for his nine-year-old daughter, Ava, since she was just three years old. 
You ready? Yeah. How did Daddy Dress Me uh, come about? One day, took her out and said, I'm gonna take pictures of you. I mean, she just started doing poses and had a little walk, and I was like, okay, this can actually be something. <laughs> that something was Daddy Dressed Me by Michael Gardner, a fashion content brand and social media campaign featuring Michael's daughter Ava wearing the designs they collaborated on. Does she ever say, Dad, nah, it's not really my style? She loves everything I create simply because it's, you know, it's her dad, he's making, not making her clothes. But there's a difference when I know she put something on and she connects with it in a certain way. Yeah. There's a different confidence, there's a different attitude. Michael's relationship with his daughter is much different than the way he grew up with an absent father. I would never want her to experience, you know, the pain that I had growing up without a father, not having that support that, you know, every kid deserves. But you knew your dad, right? So yeah, I knew him, but he wouldn't like acknowledge me as his son. There were times I was in front of him saying, you know, how he wouldn't speak. The trauma of not feeling worthy of his dad's acknowledgement has stuck with Michael into his adult years. That he dressed me is a way for Michael to provide his daughter Ava with a sense of strength and confidence that he missed out on in his childhood. What was your reaction when you found out that, that you were going to be a girl dad? The funny thing is I, I wanted a boy first. It makes total sense looking back on it now for me to have a daughter with how I am. You ready to do this? Yes. Michael's created more than 200 outfits for Ava over the last six years. His fiance, Tama, recently surprised him with a poster chronicling all of his designs. She felt like I needed to see all that I had done, and I just burst into tears. <laughs> Why? You get into the habit and the rhythm of just doing it, and you don't necessarily take enough time to fully acknowledge what it is that you're doing. Ava and Michael have also taken the Daddy Dress Me brand to TikTok with creative daddy-daughter dance videos. Ava, what is it about your dad that makes him makes him special? His sewing, his smile, oh. his, his care, his love. Sometimes when you're out and you guys are wearing a matching outfit, I would imagine sometimes people might ask about it. We do a lot. And what do you say? I told them that daddy made it. Ava, he told me that he also does your hair and your nails sometimes, too. He just did my nails, and yesterday he did my hair, too. You've got a live-in fashion designer, hairstylist, and nail stylist. I feel rich. <laughs> <laughs>
for the job that is his birthright. Do we want Charles? Do we want a monarchy? I'm Keir Simmons, and we'll take on these questions and more in our new podcast, Born to Rule. Listen now. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. At 73, Prince Charles is still waiting for the job that is his birthright. Do we want Charles? Do we want a monarchy? I'm Keir Simmons, and we'll take on these questions and more in our new podcast, Born to Rule. Listen now. Welcome back. Many dads across the country create something big with their kids that really sparks a movement. Take this Chicago dad, Joseph Williams. He did just that. He read one book to his daughter's class in 2013, and that created Mr. Dad's Father's Club, an organization that invites dads to read in public schools all over Chicago. Take a look. This is our mascot, everybody. This is Mr. Dad, OK? So everybody say hello to Mr. Dad. <laughs> <laughs> a decade ago, Joe Williams could have never imagined he'd be standing in this classroom. Back then, he was sitting in Chicago's Cook County Jail thinking about how he was going to turn his life around. Do you think you'd be here right now had you not spent that time in the Cook County Jail? You know what? Honestly, probably not. But it was a wake-up call for me to understand what can I do so I won't be in trouble. It made me think a little bit different. And this is how I ended up going into my children's school team and volunteer. After serving nine months for possession of a stolen vehicle in 2013, Joe started looking for a new start by volunteering at his daughter's elementary school lunchroom. One day, his daughter's teacher needed someone to watch the kids for a few minutes as she was grading papers. So she called Joe into the classroom to help out. And I went in and uh, I picked up a book. I read a book to the classroom and the classroom received the book so much so they wanted me to start coming every week to read books to kids. And for me starting to do that, other fathers started to come in. They were like, hey, what's going on? Can we be a part of this? Can we join? I'm like, absolutely. Nowadays, 150 dads have signed on to help Joe's cause. They call themselves the Mr. Dad's Father's Club. Joe, now a father of five, soon to be six, has been nicknamed the Black Mr. Rogers for all his efforts to enrich the lives of young people in his community on the south side of Chicago. That's quite the comparison. For black and brown children, it's good to have someone who looks like us that's still making a positive impact. My daddy is a pilot. My daddy is a doctor. I just actually created my own children's book, and it's called My Daddy Is. And my daughter gave me the idea because she came in the room one night and she was like, my daddy is me. I'm like, my daddy is me? What you mean about it? I'm like, oh, this is some deep stuff right here. What are you talking about? My daddy is me. Check this one out. My daddy is a, anybody know? Community activist. I understand you had a, uh, a special guest at this month's holiday reading hour. What's going on? Hey, my lady, how you doing over there? <laughs> we brought in Mr. Dreezy Claus. Mr. Dreezy Claus? He actually has great dreads. Our black Santa Claus come in with the children and bless them with mittens and hats and all of those great things. Black men do make a difference in the community. A lot of times we hear so many negative um, aspects of what black men are not doing and it's good to celebrate what black men are doing and are representing to the community. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Cook County Circuit Judge David Kelly was another special guest at this month's reading event at the Beasley Academic Center on Chicago's South Side. I am particularly very passionate about the opportunity to um, share with them that it's first important uh, that they believe in themselves and then secondly it's important that they work very very hard and with that they can accomplish any goal that they set out to do. Joe, what, what's the goal? What are you trying to accomplish here with, with the group and even beyond that? My goal is to get fathers back involved in their children's lives. And uh, hopefully one day, we would love to build a community center where there's a library and fathers can read books and just come in. We can actually offer more resources. Mr. Dad's Father's Club, you heard it here first. Hey, Craig, maybe one day you ever visit Chicago, come read some books with me. I, w I would do it. Keith A. Lewis Jr. and Jermaine Clark didn't know much about running a nonprofit when they first started offering free haircuts to kids in their neighborhood. But pretty soon, the organization they started 
I'm a Father First had taken on a life of its own. How did the organization come to be? Going through a divorce, you know, at a young age. I went from just being a young man trying to raise uh, two kids to now being a divorced father, having to drive five hours to and from to have a connection. That not being there to wake my children up every morning was the most painful thing I can go through. And it made me just have to repeat the affirmation, I'm a father first. Using their former work experience in branding, the pair created t-shirts with the motto, I'm a father first. Soon after, they teamed up with Atlanta Public Schools to start a program to provide free haircuts and mentoring to local boys, many from fatherless homes. Because I was uh, the typical knucklehead, I always get in trouble until they came to the school and told us that that wasn't it, that wasn't the route to go. Demetrius Marshall is an alumni of the I'm a Father First program. He enlisted in the Army after working with Keith and Jermaine throughout high school. A specific lesson that I learned was don't take anything that you have for granted because there's always someone less fortunate. What are some of the examples of, uh, of, of life advice, of wisdom that you share with some of these young men? It's not how you start, it's how you finish, I think, is the most simple jewel you can give a person. So I tell kids, the same young man that can be put out of a school 25 years ago, the same young man that could, you know, get shot twice, which I got shot twice in these city streets, can go back and help. This past summer, after a group of young men gained a bad reputation for aggressively selling bottled water on the streets of Atlanta, I'm a Father First started an entrepreneur program to teach them business skills, rebranding them with the name The Corner Boys. Why was it that you felt the need to help start this program for them? We just saw how they were too aggressive, so we wanted to come in, and I'm good with names, so I came up, well, we're going to call them The Corner Boys. You know, that's going to make all the kids say, what's that, huh? what's that? And then the branding, I mean, we had lime green shirts. So we feed them, we provide the water. I went to prison for selling drugs and I was no good at it. I talked way too much to do that, you know. I'm a marketer. So the same way Corner Boys meant dope seller back in the day, it now means a kid that works with Keith and Jermaine out here selling some water. When the pandemic struck, I'm a father first pivoted to provide free meals to the homes of the boys with whom they'd been working. Partnering with Atlanta Public Schools and corporate sponsors, they started feeding 400 households five days a week. They call the program Meals of Love. Feeding families in Atlanta through, uh, through your Meals of Love program, and how'd that come about? I called the principals and the superintendent and get permission to service their children. And then I tap in with the parent liaison to make sure we have the right families who they know are on the brink of one bill not being paid sitting in that house and not having power or food. This is a true grassroots organization. And it all started with I am a father first. Is that is that still is that still your mantra? Yeah, I mean, you know, the the actually the mantra is we are the village. Father first is gonna stay there, but it's gonna trail off into so many things. Doing God's work, Keith. Nothing but him. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Ukraine and Russia. Could you help me understand what's going on? So to help make sense of it, we've created a newscast just for them. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Allie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Allie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. At 73, Prince Charles is still waiting for the job that is his birthright. Do we want Charles? Do we want a monarchy? I'm Keir Simmons, and we'll take on these questions and more in our new podcast, Born to Rule. Listen now. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Allie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Women's basketball has been systematically held back. After 49 years of Title IX, and we still have work to do. In Their Court, a podcast from NBC News and NBC Sports that goes inside the issues of inequality in women's sports. Listen now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. To cover the news, you have to be in it. These are families trying to board those trains to Poland. I also want to get home. 
you'll get home. Every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. time is something this group of dads doesn't take for granted. They're graduates of Up Next. It's a New York City-based fatherhood program that helps formerly incarcerated and non-custodial dads find employment and reconnect with their families. Yeah, you're feeling good, huh? Nice day today, huh? Harry Glenn is one of those dads. What happened in your life that led you to this place? Started off really young, getting in trouble out in the street selling drugs with my friends, and then uh, went to prison in my late 20s for 10 years. Harry was arrested on drug charges when his daughter Anastasia was still a toddler. He would spend much of her childhood in prison. How much time were you able to spend with your daughter before you went to prison? When I left Anastasia, I was two years old. Seeing my daughter come to the visits let me know that I'm letting somebody down here. This is somebody that's dependent on me. When Harry was released from prison, his daughter Anastasia was almost a teenager and living with her aunt. Harry's parole officer referred him to the six-week-long Up Next support program. That's where he met other dads, hoping to regain custody of their Gentlemen, children. how are we doing today? All right. All right. What drives you today? Like, what gets you up in the morning? Growing up without a dad and being a dad, it's just I just wanted to show the difference to my children. I don't want to miss a day out of my kid's life. I want to be their superhero. That's it. As long as they get older and like, my daddy was there for me, I'm fine with that. My daughter just turned five. This is the second birthday in the year and that I didn't get to spend with her, you know? And on those hard days um, where you just kind of like don't want to deal with it, understanding that there's someone in that space that might need your energy and having the accountability just to be there and show up for that person. How did the Up Next program help you become a better father? Well, they gave me the first line of communication with my daughter, like a direct line. They reached out to her aunt, and her aunt let me know, like, listen, it's your daughter. You can come get her anytime you want to. I just want to make sure that you're prepared for what's going on here. And she started filling me in, like, these are the things that you miss. This is what your daughter may need from you. How hard is it to be a dad when you're in prison? I, can, I wouldn't say that you could be a, a father because what I learned now was to be a father is just to be present pretty much. That's something that I've been learning. I've been learning that every day. After completing Up Next, Harry was placed in a transitional job program working as a street cleaner in Times Square. In 2018, he was hired by the Midtown Community Court to be their community engagement coordinator. Just recently, he bought his first home and his older daughter, Anastasia, now 16, has decided to move back in with him. How proud are you of yourself? Oh, see, I don't like to give myself no props. You should. Statistically, this, this is not how it plays out. Nah, not at all. I learned so much inside that box about myself that it helped me come out here and be able to be vulnerable and accept other people's opinion and their plan, too. Harry's life after prison has also been the start of a new chapter of fatherhood. His fiance, Renita, recently gave birth to their daughter, Kinsley. It's very important for society to give them another chance because, like, who doesn't make mistakes? The part that's important is that you learn from it, you grow from it. When Annie was little, I was in the street, so I wasn't focused on home. Now I can't wait to 5 o'clock and get there because I know that it's somebody like this little, with a big old head of hair, and she's knocking at that window like, yo, dad, what's up? That's my joy right there. That's my reward. Harry was recently promoted to overnight manager at Times Square Alliance, and his daughter graduates from high school at the end of the month. After missing so much of her childhood, this is quite the accomplishment that he calls a real blessing to be there for. Coming up, a Brooklyn dad creates comic books featuring his son as the ultimate superhero. Plus, why an ice cream truck brings this family together year after year. We'll have that for you right after this. For breaking news in our changing world, 
Download the NBC News app. From New Orleans. Nice to go really spend some time with you. Appreciate it. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now? What it all means for you for an hour every day? It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Allie Jackson now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. The midterms are here. It's time to plan your vote. We'll provide everything you need to know to successfully cast your ballot. Just select any state you want to learn about for the primary or general election, and you'll instantly get voting rules, see the next big deadline, and learn how to take action for your plan. Voting rules have changed since 2020, and those rules vary from state to state. So it's time to get planning for 2022. Visit NBCNews.com slash plan your vote today. Hallie Jackson now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Ukraine and Russia. Could you help me understand what's going on? So to help make sense of it, we've created a newscast just for them. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Welcome back to our Dad's Got This Marathon from music to dance. We've put dads at center stage in our stories about the arts. Earlier this year, I sat down with rapper Fuge, and he shared with me why he is on a mission to update the way black history is taught in schools. Take a look. Check. Black women in history. Gotta say it loud so it's not a mystery. This song is dedicated to your legacy. So it's time we represent where the sisters be. This is not your ordinary library story time. Rapper and social justice artist Fuch is in the house teaching black history through hip hop and educating and empowering kids in the process. Your songs and the videos, they've really taken learning about black history to a whole new level. What inspired you uh, to do it this way? So it really came from me wanting to teach about the history that I wish that I learned in school with this like catchy style that educates, entertains, and empowers our people all at the same time. Fuge credits his parents for recognizing and nurturing his public speaking skills at a young age, encouraging him to carry on a family legacy. No! for tomorrow is that we never underestimate the power of God. So I have a lot of pastors in my family, both my grandpas, one is still living. My uncle is a pastor. So I always grew around these strong black male influences that had a way with words. There's a, a little person over your right shoulder who keeps popping up. Or I see you. You gonna sit down? Sit down. Hold on, she need me to, her, her slinky got messed up. So I show my daughter Cole Train and Fred Hammond, introduce her to new legends like Kamazi and Chance. I feel that little person is Future's four year old daughter, Aura, who has appeared in many of his music videos and is featured on a song on his debut album, Family Tree. You're a dad. You're a, you're a single dad. How does little Aura, how does she fit into all of this? When she was born in 2017, the second I held her, it's a shift. It manifests in different ways. For me, it was like, I'm an artist. This is what I do. I want to pour into her. And I just started my YouTube channel. I started making even more songs than I ever had. Look around, because we're all brothers and sisters, because we all have an African ancestor. Black history is the story of you and me. You really sort of stress this idea that black history isn't just black history, it's everyone's history. Well, why do you think that's a concept that, that's sort of gotten lost to a lot of folks over the years? It's something that is common sense. I think sometimes people try to over-politicize truth. 
This is all of our accomplishments together. It's okay to champion another community of people for the things that they have done because it's all humanity. Future's music videos have also been embraced by teachers and classrooms around the country who have sung his songs at assemblies and used them to design black history lesson plans. When he's not performing on stage or working on new material in the studio, Fuch teaches poetry and spoken word to middle schoolers in the Bronx, where he lives. A lot of my songs are inspired by lesson plans I'm writing for my students. And it also gives me validity to the students. They go, you know what, our teacher, he's, he's kind of cool. You get some street cred. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Back at home, Future's daughter and musical collaborator, Aura, is his biggest fan. There's a new one that we just made up. You made a new song? Can I hear it? It's a remix. Said his daddy and daughter. Ain't none hotter. Said you trying to battle us, please don't even bother. Yes, this is my daughter, and her name's Aura. And she got that shine, the beats and the rhymes. We kill them with the lines. You heard what we said. You don't believe us. You ain't got to lie, Craig. Woo! Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, daddy, daughter, day, girl, what up? what up? Right now, we can go anywhere you want. When Pierce Freelon, the North Carolina-based musician and producer, first started listening to children's music with his kids, he couldn't help but notice what was missing. There aren't a lot of black folks that have platforms in children's music, and, and black men especially. Uh, you don't see us as often. And, and since you couldn't find it, you decided, oh, oh, I'll, I'll just create my own. Well, yeah, I think that, uh, you know, necessity is the mother of invention, as they say. Freelon's new album, D.A.D., which was recorded almost entirely during the pandemic, just dropped in July. And although he has a long resume of hip hop and jazz collaborations, this was his first foray into the genre of children's music. With D.A.D., uh, it was really important for me to start to address topics that I didn't hear other children's musicians talking about. A song like Daddy Daughter Day, and we're playing tennis, and we're eating cotton candy out at the park. People are like, yo, I've been waiting to see myself affirmed in this space. The messages that, that you sing about, that, that you rap about, where do they come from? from real parenting experiences. Listen here, you don't want to touch, you don't need to fear. This is your body, no one else tells you how to feel. Here's the deal. A song like My Body is a soft entry point for kids to start thinking about body autonomy. You know, before they're sexually active or curious to become familiar with words like consent. The motivation behind DAD came while Pierce was spending time reminiscing with his father, renowned architect Phil Freelon during his final days. Phil Freelon was most famous for designing the National Museum of African American History and Culture in Washington, D.C. He died from ALS last year. When my dad got sick, I used my phone almost to time travel with him, show him different pictures and different videos and different audio clips. Almost as a part of a cathartic grieving process, I began to take these precious family archives and like any good beat maker, chop them up into samples and put them into beats. And I imagine dad is smiling down on, on, on the album. He makes an appearance on the album too, on track 14. Uh, there's a voice memo of uh, my dad talking to his grandchildren. So as artists, it's important to be perceptive. That means to be more that's a gift that he that he gave me as a kid growing up, and now it's a gift that other families can hopefully listen to and appreciate as well. Hello, hello, one, two, three. Fierce's 10-year-old daughter, Stella, a talent in her own right, is featured on the album and starred in the associated music videos. Are you working on new music right now? I'm working on two new songs. Yeah, tell, tell them about Zombie. Zombie, that, that sounds serious. During Corona, when you touch them and you feel like and they're gonna turn into a zombie. That's a timely song. When I'm few, I feel like a zombie. Can't get too close. You know, no coughing, afraid of my germs. I'm not so scary, I can't get close. I'm stuck at home. I feel alone. Yes! Yes! 
news. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Ukraine and Russia. Can you help me understand what's going on? So to help make sense of it, we've created a newscast just for them. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. To cover the news, you have to be in it. These are families trying to board those trains to Poland. I also want to get home. You'll get home. Every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. We'll meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Hey, who's this? To cover the news, you have to be in it. These are families trying to board those trains to Poland. I also want to get home. You'll get home. Every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Women's basketball has been systematically held back. After 49 years of Title IX, we still have work to do. In Their Court, a podcast from NBC News and NBC Sports that goes inside the issues of inequality in women's sports. Listen now. At 73, Prince Charles is still waiting for the job that is his birthright. Do we want Charles? Do we want a monarchy? I'm Keir Simmons, and we'll take on these questions and more in our new podcast, Born to Rule. Listen now. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Now Tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Dancing on the stage is very exhilarating to show your expressions through movement. 16-year-old Jimmy Long has been dancing competitively since he was 6 years old. But two years ago, his passion for dance was momentarily challenged by some teasing audience members during a performance at a local school. Some of the students were like saying derogatory comments and uh, some slurs. The comments thrown at Jimmy and the other male dancers were homophobic slurs. Jimmy's dad, Greg Long, drove Jimmy and his friends home after the incident and a new motto for their dance troupe was born. The phrase itself, dance on, how was that born? I got to listen to how uh, eight or nine uh, 12 year olds processed bigotry, uh, homophobia. Instead of getting uh, angry, I decided to make just a t-shirt for them. I came up with, hey, we're just gonna dance on. You know, we're just gonna move past this. Two years from those first t-shirts, Dance On, now a full-fledged nonprofit organization that has sold thousands of shirts and other dance on apparel. All of the proceeds have gone directly to scholarships for financially at need dancers. You turn those homophobic slurs that were being hurled at your son uh, into quite a bit of good. It really was just saying, hey, you don't stop because somebody feels that you shouldn't be doing that. And even if it doesn't become your career, um, it, it does become your experience and, and it fuels everything in life. You ready to go? Yeah, I'm ready. In 2018, Greg's son Jimmy was invited to Chicago's United Center Arena to share the anti-bullying message of Dance On before former First Lady Michelle Obama took the stage for the launch of her Becoming Book Tour. I'm becoming an advocate for anti-bullying and I love to dance. When you were standing backstage, what, what was going through your mind? I, I lost it. I admittedly had tears coming down my face. The strength that it takes for somebody like that to stand in front of 20,000 people and say, I've been bullied and I'm not gonna let it um, stop me from what I like to do. It's a proud moment. It's a proud moment. Sorry, getting a little lost. How could it not be I, uh, a proud moment? I definitely couldn't have done this without my dad. He helped me realize a lot of important lessons, like stay true to yourself. And he just, is super supportive. Part of that support has been organizing master classes and events with professional male dancers who often share their own stories of being bullied. They've also helped the group by choreographing conceptual dance videos that amplify their message of acceptance and tolerance. 
it's been a very humbling experience for me, especially since I don't know the world that he lives in. So it's been nice to, to kind of um, be a part of that as opposed to just being the dad who claps very loudly in the back of the, of the, of the auditorium. It's a testament to uh, how far a father will go to help a child pursue his dreams. It's remarkable. Oh, you got me, Jake Jet Pulse. Dad? Professional comic book artist Led Bradshaw's son Jake was just three and a half years old when he was diagnosed with autism. Help! What did you know about autism? Um, I really didn't know anything. The diagnosis led me to do a lot of uh, a lot of research. Through that research, Led discovered art therapy exercises that he started incorporating into his son's daily routines. And then one of the, uh, the, the projects was envision yourself as a superhero. He started drawing himself as this character and it was all that he wanted to talk about. And it, it would seem as if the apple didn't fall far from the tree because you were quite the comic book kid too. And I guess you could see behind me, it's like I never let that go. I knew what I wanted to do ever since I was little. Like all I wanted to do was draw Saturday morning cartoons. No, Walking Dead and Night of the Living Dead are two different things. Led and Jake started nerding out over everything comic related they could get their hands on. And they soon found themselves collaborating on their first original <laughs> father-son comic book, Jake Jet Pulse. How did that first Jake Jet Pulse book come to be? Jake was in the second grade and it was a parent teachers conference about his ability to remember like sight words and spelling. The whole idea came about when I asked the teacher, I was like, well, could I have a list of the sight words the kids are learning? Out of that list, Led began creating flashcards for his son. On them, he drew pictures of a superhero in Jake's likeness, acting out the vocabulary words. Jake flying, Jake, you know, running real fast. So he learned the words run, jump. So what kind of color hair would he have? He would have blue hair. What's his role now? He's involved in almost every part of it, creating the characters, envisioning like the backstory. He sits at my side while I'm putting it all together so I get his stamp of approval. Like that? Mm -hmm. There you go. I should hire you. So sometimes they'll say, Dad, that, that's that's actually not, that's, that's not my vision. We need to go back to the drawing board. Yeah, sometimes like I like to lend my creative input, but I, you know, I just give in. You know, there's no point in <laughs> arguing. <laughs> what has this meant for, for him emotionally, intellectually, being this involved uh, in a project like this? His vocabulary started to build. He became more confident. It's like being a superhero, he started to emulate the, the, the character also. Even though it's a collaborative thing, it's more like a, like a love letter to my son where I can actually teach him how to be a good human being, you know, like to not give up, to work your hardest, to do your best. In addition to raising awareness about autism through the character of Jake Jet Pulse, Led also created a website to help educate people about autism spectrum disorder and foster a sense of community for parents. As a parent, I wanted to create something to show people that you're not alone. This does not define who their children will be. There are amazing and exceptional individuals who are on the autism spectrum. I wanted to create something that gives people hope. A feeling of hope, strength, and confidence that has surely rubbed off on his son, Jake. Jake, do you have a favorite comic book character? Yes, and that's me. <laughs> Mine too, Jake Jet Pulse. I'm a big fan. Can I ask you about autism? If you're diagnosed with autism, that's not bad. It's okay. You're still unique and you can do anything. When we come back, I chat with the dad-daughter duo who have high-wheel biked across the country twice. Plus, did they get me on that bike? We find out after the break. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. The midterms are here. It's time to plan your vote. We'll provide everything you need to know to successfully cast your ballot. Just select any state you want to learn about for the primary or general election, and you'll instantly get voting rules, see the next big deadline, and learn how to take action for your plan. 
Voting rules have changed since 2020, and those rules vary from state to state. So it's time to get planning for 2022. Visit NBCNews.com slash plan your vote today. Women's basketball has been systematically held back. After 49 years of Title IX, we still have work to do. In Their Court, a podcast from NBC News and NBC Sports that goes inside the issues of inequality in women's sports. Listen now. At 73, Prince Charles is still waiting for the job that is his birthright. Do we want Charles? Do we want a monarchy? I'm Keir Simmons, and we'll take on these questions and more in our new podcast, Born to Rule. Listen now. To cover the news, you have to be in it. These are families trying to board those trains to Poland. I also want to get home. You'll get home. Every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. At 73, Prince Charles is still waiting for the job that is his birthright. Do we want Charles? Do we want a monarchy? I'm Keir Simmons, and we'll take on these questions and more in our new podcast, Born to Rule. Listen now. We will meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Who is this? Welcome back. We end the show with two dads who have taken a hobby and turned it into a lifelong bonding activity. Dad, Randy Olenek, has been high wheel biking for more than 30 years, and as soon as his daughter Amy was able to ride, she joined him. I talked to Randy about his adventures, but what I learned from him is that it's not always about the activity, but how the activity is a conduit to connect with the child. Take a look. I like riding with my dad because I definitely feel safe and secure. Often I think about what's gonna go wrong, and so having somebody as a backup, like, yep, we're gonna be fine, just helps you get out of that negative mindset. How do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. That is our <laughs> mantra. <laughs> we're gonna ride with Bill. Yeah. I started riding high wheels back in 1991 when I was asked to join a high wheel bicycle band. Soon after, Randy and his family joined the Wheelman Organization. It's an international group that collects, restores, and shows antique bicycles. My daughter wanted to ride with the Wheelman, but the girls all had to wear dresses and ride the, the safety bikes, and she had, did not want anything to do with the dresses. So she said, Dad, get me some knickers. I'm learning to ride a high wheel. How old was she? She was 13, I believe, 12 or 13. And the rest is history. And the rest is history. I've been riding with her since. Riding with Amy is great just because it gives us time to catch up on everything. No cell phones, no texting, even just clear time just to talk about nothing, you know, just to be silly and talk about goofy stuff. But one pivotal event led to the ride of a lifetime. I had a very dear friend of mine in Indiana, Wheelman. He says, I'm going to the doctor. He goes to the doctor, diagnosed with colon cancer. Two, two months later, he passes away. His death gave Randy and Amy the push to ride cross country on their high wheel bikes together. And as soon as he passed away, that was the straw that said, we're going because you just don't know. Ray rode on the back of my bike as a guardian angel all the way across the country and looked over us. The journey was 57 days, over 3,314 miles. They started in San Francisco and ended in Boston, Massachusetts. Amy was attempting to be the first woman to ride across. Unfortunately, another wheelman started several months before us. So I started thinking, you know, I enjoyed the trip so much, I'm going north to south. And I told Amy, no woman has done both. So you're number two there, but if you do this, you will be the first woman. And of course, Amy said, Sign me up. <laughs> <laughs> so we started in Sault Ste. Marie and, and then continued down through Michigan all the way down into Florida. When you were on that cross country track, what surprised you most about your daughter? When you raise your children, you know, you raise them up to like 18 and you send them off. But you, they're always kids to you. But she came back as an adult, so I got to learn what a great adult she had turned out to be. So it wasn't until after that it really dawned on me how special the time was. You're trying to get across the country and everything, but after the fact, when someone comes and says, that, that's the greatest thing you did with your daughter, and you're thinking like, yeah, <laughs> it really was. Why was it so emotional when you finished that trip with, with Amy? 
when you finally get to the end there, you've made it, and you're sitting there with your daughter, and um, and you know she reaches over and puts her arm around you, and it's done, and you just get like this <laughs> to be there with her to 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 experience that. But making memories, I would imagine. Yeah. Yeah. It's very bonding. While he's not like silly and singing songs until I make him, um, <laughs> he always has a really good attitude. No chains here. No chains. No, no gears here. No. As soon as chain and gear got here, these bikes disappeared overnight. But you do have a bell. You do have a bell. Get the horses out of the way. Is, oh, that was the purpose back then. Back then, yeah. And what purpose does it serve now? Get the people out of the way. <laughs> and by people, he means me. While I wasn't ready to ride myself, Randy did show me how it's done. Oh, oh, here we go. Here we go. Holy smokes. Here you make go. it look so easy. <laughs> you make it look so easy. Ho <laughs> oh! ho! One of the things I always enjoy about doing these stories about dads like yourself is it, it, it becomes fairly obvious to me pretty quickly that it's never about the thing. Mm -hmm. it's, it's about that thing being a conduit to connect with the child. Absolutely. You find something that they like doing that you do, there's an instant connection there. Um, unfortunately, a lot of us raised in my generation, you had the father figure and your children, and the two worlds didn't mix all that much. And so I was very fortunate that my kids made the connection for me, because I wasn't wise enough to do that. Sometimes with parents, you see your kids as kids forever. So going on our ride specifically really just showed how much like faith he had in me as an adult. Like he knew that I could hold my own. He knew that he could count on me. And so to feel that way as an adult, it really means a lot to me. Let's do What's it. the saying? Pain is temporary, pride is forever. So to be able to be uh, together and, and work the ice cream truck has been special for them and, and very special for me. You are a bad dad of only we have. I'm the best dad ever that you ever had? Yep. As a father of 10, Joel Wegner was already a busy man. But when he saw an ice cream truck drive by and was struck by a simple idea, he thought, I could run an ice cream truck business. I started Special Neat Treats in April of 2021. I found a used ice cream truck in Columbus, Indiana. So we purchased the ice cream truck in January. My wife had the, the brilliant idea to name it Special Neat Treats, a play on word of special needs. Joel quickly realized the ice cream truck wouldn't just be a fun job for him, it would also be a great way to give his two children, Mary Kate and Josh, both born with Down syndrome, jobs after they aged out of the school system. When, uh, you know, teachers and people would ask her, you know, what do you want to do when you get, get older? She wanted to work with Papa. Why was it so important for you to create this, this business for them? At every stage with special needs kids, you look toward the future and what's their life going to be like in the next phase. But it also becomes more a responsibility of us as parents to say, what can we do to give them worth and to allow them to add some value to society. That's very important to us as, a, as parents of Mary Kate and Josh. All summer long, special neat treats sold ice cream, but it's not the only thing the trio served up this summer. Was there a moment where you realized this was about more than just selling ice cream? There was a school here that was doing a special program uh, for special needs kids, and they had contacted me and wanted me to bring treats to uh, to give out to the students there on an afternoon. And a little girl came up and uh, she said, thanks for coming today. You've made my day. <laughs> I didn't cure her autism. I didn't take care of the other issues in her life. But for one day, for one moment, she had a great day. And I realized when I left, this isn't about selling ice cream. We do that but it's about giving hope. It's about interacting with people and uh, and just sharing joy. Amen, Joel. You know, we're all called to minister in different ways. And Absolutely. It would seem as if you, you've, you've answered your call. In my wildest dreams, I would have never sat around and said, an ice cream truck, that's where I'm gonna spend the rest of my life. <laughs> That's, that's how it always is though, Joel. Like it's always the unexpected things that, it is. that it bring is. us the greatest that's joy. That's the greatest joy. You're absolutely right. But I still needed to know, how was the ice cream? 
and I went straight to the source for this one. What's up, guys? Hello. <laughs> Hi, I, I hear you guys sell the best ice cream in America. That's what oh, I heard. Yes, we did. <laughs> yes, we did. Of course we did. <laughs> of course you did. Well, congratulations <laughs> on, okay. a, uh, on a great business that you've got with dad there. What are, what are your hopes for Mary Kate and Josh in the future? As a parent, you you have desires, and yet I don't know that either one of them will ever be totally independent. Uh, but we hope to uh, you know, move them in that direction, and I hope they can keep helping me sell ice cream for for a long time. Special Neats Treats is back this summer, and with a second ice cream truck now today. The Dynamic Trio has sold more than 15,000 treats across the Ohio area. Thank you so much for joining me for this Dad's Got This Hour. Happy Father's Day to all the dads out there. And continue to watch our Dad's Got This series on the third hour of today and right here on Today All Day. What is happening, everybody? Welcome to your Pop Star Plus for today. And boy, do we have a great one for you coming up. We're going to go behind the scenes with a movie that is roaring at the box office, Jurassic World Dominion. We spoke to the director about how he was able to bring all that dino magic to life. We're also going to hear from the very talented Dakota Johnson. And later, we're looking back on Speed, the movie 28 years later, with one of our favorite clips of Sandra Bullock. But first, here are today's Pop Star headlines. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I, don't know what that was. I like the pop star chair. My rally cry. I like yeah. that. that was little Ed McMahon there. A lot of coffee this morning. All right, I read about this story yesterday. I'm glad it's going to lead off. Squid Game for real. It's only a matter of time, but officially it is happening, people. Netflix announcing its biggest series of all time, which followed 456 people competing for cash in life or death games. It's now going to become a reality series. 456 players are going to take on a series of games for the chance to win 4.56 million bucks. Netflix saying it's the biggest lump sum cash prize in TV history. And presumably, we hope, no one's actually going to get hurt in this version of the show called Squid Game The Challenge. YouTube star Mr. Beast has already done something similar, recreating this show with amazing detail to have people compete in games like Red Light, Green Light. But this Netflix show is taking it to the next level with that huge cash prize. And you can sign up now for a chance to compete. Good luck. All right, next up, Top Gun Maverick has hit another major milestone. As of this week, the Tom Cruise starring sequel has become the highest grossing movie of the year. Since debuting on May 27th, Top Gun has pulled in 401.8 million bucks domestically at the box office, officially beating out Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness for that number one spot. Clearly, there was an appetite for nostalgia, the fighter jets, the need for speed, the beach volleyball scenes, all that stuff, <laughs> propelling the film to its massive box office. Next up, Savannah Jeopardy. Every night, talented people get up there. Well, you hosted it, so I figured yeah. I'd just oh, okay. want you in here. Nice. Yeah, the people get up there and they, you know, they answer questions that would stump most of us. But sometimes, sometimes, not often, a contestant gets stumped at a question that we all know the answer to. This week, that happened to Mazin Omer. Knight 400. To honor his father, this star here was knighted in his birth name. So he's Sir Morris Micklewhite. Mazin. Was Mick Jagger? No. Lisa, who is Michael Caine? Oh, yeah. You thought, As wow, you can imagine, Jagger. the wrong answer went Mick. viral. Yikes. Yeah, many wondering I what think the of his world... name either right then Michael or there. Uh, yeah. By the way, yeah. no. Not... What if Michael Caine Jagger. was the lead singer of the Rolling Stones? That'd be interesting. <laughs> it would be. <laughs> and maybe Mazin, in his defense, just his brain went to, okay, who's knighted? Uh -huh. uh, Mick Jagger's yes, knighted also. Yeah. Yes. He could have yes. said Elton John. He could have said Sir Anthony Hopkins yeah. or who knows. Anyway. Uh, next up, Only Murders in the Building, the critically acclaimed show starring Steve Martin, Martin Short, and Selena Gomez yes. as amateur oh true gosh. crime prod podcasters is coming back for season two. We now have a new trailer ahead of the premiere teasing more comedy, more guest stars, and of course more murder. Yeah. Our lives blow up if we all go down for this. Don't you want to clear your name too? I have to see this through. Let's focus. I'll be right back. Well, you can't leave me here. I got good at parties. Uh, I, I'm, I'm nervous to talk to people because I can come off creepy. <laughs> Evidence keeps showing up in our apartments. Who's ever doing this it is toying with us. This ends the investigation into a whole new direction. We hope it will take us to clues. 
It's a wall. And suspects. So what do we know about my daughter's murder? Maybe she killed Bunny. You think that woman stabbed someone eight times? We'll put a pin in her for now. <laughs> the minute Uncle Al tells me to start watching that, I'll start watching he's, it. Oh, he's, uh, he knows me. Are you in? Yeah. Yeah. He knows oh, yeah. Me. Are you, you already in on that? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. You great. have to, I have to get in there. Okay. Yeah. Uh, all right. That's our pop star. That was great. And now to the reason they call the show Pop Star Plus, a couple extra headlines for you. And we'll start with a look at the new docuseries, America the Beautiful. Michael B. Jordan and National Geographic have teamed up for a six-episode series showcasing the wildlife of North America, quote, as you have never seen it before. Jordan narrates the new series, and the first trailer promises stunning visuals of our country and the wildlife inhabiting it, along with a soundtrack from a diverse group of musicians. This is America. Sea to shining sea. See, now I want to watch that just after that little clip. America the Beautiful hits Disney Plus on the very appropriate day of July 4th. Next up, Brad Pitt and Gwyneth Paltrow. Let's take a little walk down memory lane. You might recall back in the mid-90s when Brad and Gwen were an item. The two actors were engaged for a time before calling it off and, of course, going their separate ways. But the two are making headlines again after a conversation they had on Gwyneth's Goop website where they were meant to talk about lifestyle things but ended up talking a little bit about their time together making the internet collectively fawn. Pitt remarking, and I quote, Everything works out, doesn't it? To which Paltrow says back, quote, I finally found the Brad I was supposed to marry. It just took me 20 years. That's a reference to her husband now, Brad Falchuk. Pitt responds, and it's lovely to have you as a friend now, adding, and again I quote, and I do love you. To which Gwyneth replied, I love you so much. This is like a soap opera going back and forth. It's like a tennis match there. Cool that they're on good terms, though, that's for sure. Those are your pop star headlines. Let's take a quick break. We're going to come back and show you how they make dinosaurs in movies look so darn real. We've got some behind-the-scenes scenes secrets for that with the director of Jurassic World Dominion. Coming up. We'll meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Hey, who's this? For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Ukraine and Russia, can you help me understand what's going on? So to help make sense of it, we've created a newscast just for them. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Women's basketball has been systematically held back. After 49 years of Title IX, we still have work to do. In Their Court, a podcast from NBC News and NBC Sports that goes inside the issues of inequality in women's sports. Listen now. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Ukraine and Russia, could you help me understand what's going on? So to help make sense of it, we've created a newscast just for them. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Welcome back to Popstar Plus. Director Colin Trevorrow first helped relaunch the Jurassic franchise back in 2015 with Jurassic World. And he's now at the helm again in the third and latest installment, Jurassic World Dominion. Now, maybe you've heard of it. Of course you have. It's number one at the box office right now. Or is that Maverick? I don't know. They seem to be going back and forth. Either way, Colin spoke to us about what it was like to pull off an epic final chapter to the dinosaur story. I promise you, I am going to get her back. Jurassic World Dominion is a completely different kind of film than any of the other Jurassic movies have been. The dinosaurs are out in the world. Uh, they are creating havoc and genetic power has uh, reached a point where it's threatening the survival of life on this planet. 
I wanted to direct the third film because just being able to wrap up the story we've been telling the whole time, to be able to take these characters who I care about and make sure that they find a home together and feel safe. And I, I include the dinosaurs in that, you know, the T-Rex. These are characters from our childhood who we love. And so making sure that all of these stories are wrapped up in a way that feels consistent, that when you watch all three movies together, it feels like one long story, which I really believe it does. That was really important to me. And the fact that we made it during a pandemic was really challenging. I was directing a movie in two different countries at the same time. It was hard, but we did it. I wanted it to be a warmer film uh, than the previous two. We, we were kind of a cold blue in Jurassic World. And then in this film, I wanted it to feel like a big, robust, romantic adventure. Uh, it's shot on film, which is really important to me. And hopefully by the time you get to the end of it, you will feel like you've, you've been through a lot and the people just look tired and bruised. And that's the kind of adventure I like. From a production design standpoint, it's really important to me uh, and Kevin Jenkins, our designer, that we are as practical as possible at any given turn. So we didn't make a movie in a computer. There are not uh, digitally designed backgrounds. We built 112 sets. We made animatronic dinosaurs. Uh, we put people uh, in real environments with real animals so they could look around and be confident that they were actually there. And then the biggest challenge is when you build something that's as spectacular as some of the things that we built to make sure not to constantly just be in a giant wide shot uh, showing off your amazing set to the audience, but really get in there and live in it as if it's a real place. It was very important to use animatronics because uh, not only is that a legacy, it's, it's what made us love Jurassic Park so much is that we actually saw those animals were real. Uh, but in our film, because we have such great actors, to be able to provide them the opportunity to not be uh, emoting across from a tennis ball, but actually be able to reach out and touch something in the way that Laura Dern does in her scene when she moves her finger back and forth. The puppeteers naturally reacted to what she was doing, so there was an actual exchange uh, between living things, which I think is extremely special. What is that? Biggest carnivore the world has ever seen. Run! The reality of these movies, I think, really matters. It's one of the very few franchises uh, where the main characters are just regular people. They're professionals, they're scientists, they're parents. And so I wanted to make sure the whole world felt as if it actually existed because we are talking about some real world scientific issues in the film. Some of the dangers that we present uh, are dangers that exist. Uh, and so the closer we could get it uh, to our reality, I think the more believable it's gonna be. Some of the more insane things that we do in the film uh, that you're gonna buy. Working with this cast was just one of the most satisfying creative experiences that I've had because I was able to work with legendary actors like Laura Dern and Sam Neill and Jeff Goldblum, B.D. Wong, and then these good friends of mine uh, who I've been making these movies with for eight years, Chris Pratt and Bryce Dallas Howard, and then these new friends who I think make as much of an impact on this movie as any of the legends and icons who have come before in Mamadou Eche and DeWanda Wise and Tishan Lachman. All of them together uh, as, as one group, especially at the end when they're literally all together as one group, uh, was it was just such a wonderful experience. And it was, it was during a really challenging time. We were all very afraid. We were making a film during uh, COVID. Uh, and yet because of all of these people, because they have such brilliant skill sets and also just beautiful souls, we managed to get through it together. I wanted to pay homage to uh, the spirit of Jurassic Park, but I didn't want to make a carbon copy of Jurassic Park. And that's something that I've really focused on in each of the movies. We feel like in order to honor what Steven created and what Michael Crichton created, we have to aggressively bring new ideas to the table because that's what they did. And so these movies are different. They're a completely different kind of experience. And yet I know that Jurassic Park's never going away. They'll all be there for people to enjoy together. So to me, it was making sure that the characters that we were bringing back felt like they were presented in a way that was honest and authentic and real. And you actually believe these were human beings who've been alive for the same 30 years that some of us have been alive for. And a lot's happened in those 30 years. People love this franchise, but I think they just love dinosaurs. And however we present dinosaurs in each of these films, I hope that at all times it taps into, yes, a fear that we have of them, but also a humility that we have in the face of them, this recognition that they walked the earth, they share the same soil as us, and yet they look so different and lived so long ago and actually lived so much longer than we have. It's a very grand idea and a, and a really unique relationship between you know movie creature, movie monster, and audience. Thank <laughs> you.
When people leave the theater, I really hope that there's a sense that uh, we made these movies for a reason. And we, we weren't just making a, a bunch of situations where people could get chomped by dinosaurs, even though we do that, and I enjoy it. These are movies that, that did have something to say, and ultimately we landed in a place that, that hopefully you can walk out of there with your family feeling a sense that, that we are small and we are fragile, but also we can succeed and we can survive if we do it together. Thanks to Colin for chatting with us. And of course, Jurassic World Dominion from our parent company, NBC Universal, is in theaters now. Just ahead, we'll catch up with the talented Dakota Johnson. What would you like to see from the federal government to keep Buffalo safe? If there is legislation brought to you to ban contraception, would you sign it? What should be focused on that could reduce inflation and avoid a recession? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. The midterms are here. It's time to plan your vote. We'll provide everything you need to know to successfully cast your ballot. Just select any state you want to learn about for the primary or general election, and you'll instantly get voting rules, see the next big deadline, and learn how to take action for your plan. Voting rules have changed since 2020, and those rules vary from state to state. So it's time to get planning for 2022. Visit NBCNews.com slash plan your vote today. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Allie Jackson now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. What would you like to see from the federal government to keep Buffalo safe? If there is legislation brought to you to ban contraception, would you sign it? What should be focused on that could reduce inflation and avoid a recession? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Women's basketball has been systematically held back. After 49 years of Title IX, we still have work to do. In Their Court, a podcast from NBC News and NBC Sports that goes inside the issues of inequality in women's sports. Listen now. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. We'll meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Hey, who's this? Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Welcome back to Popstar Plus. The lovely Dakota Johnson stars in the new film Cha-Cha Real Smooth. And she stopped by Studio 1A to tell us all about it. Dakota Johnson has become a favorite to watch in recent years from the mega hit, of course, Fifty Shades, to that franchise, to the darlings like the Peanut Butter Falcon in her newest film, The Cha-Cha Real Smooth. She plays a mom who gets tangled up with a young man trying to find his place after college. She uh, struggles for some challenges on her own. Take a look. Have you ever been depressed? Whoa. Downer alert. You don't have to sound the downer alert. I'm just curious. I've always been depressed. Whoa. <laughs> downer alert. <laughs> before Lola was born? Especially before Lola was born. Raising her made me better. Okay, first of all, Dakota, thank you for being here. Thank you. This movie is getting all kinds of Atta Girls. It did it got an audience uh, award at Sundance. You just premiered at Tribeca. And you just said something to me five seconds ago that struck <laughs> me. You said this, of all the things you've ever done in your career, this is the thing you're most proud of. Yeah, I do feel the most proud. Why is that? Proud. Yeah. I don't know. We, we also screened at South by Southwest, and it was the first time that I watched the movie in a movie theater with an audience. And it felt so different than just being an actress in a movie because it, like, I made the whole thing from the very beginning to the very end, and my blood, sweat, and tears are all over it, and I just felt so proud. I mean, this, okay, you have a, obviously a, this production company, and this was your first. Why did you choose this? What was it about this story that captivated you? Well, Cooper Reif, the director, yeah. writer, and star of the movie, is just a very, very talented, sensitive, um, open-hearted, uh, unique person. He has a very specific point of view yeah. on the world and people and he made a little movie before and I love championing, you know, up-and-coming filmmakers and writers, so it was 
kind of perfect and he just the story is also really poignant you know and it's um it's 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 special. It's a tiny little special specific thing and I those are the things that I love the most. You play a mother of an autistic child. Yes. And just explain a little bit about the premise of the movie. The movie is about a young man who leaves college and he goes home and he doesn't really know what to do with himself and he gets a job as a party starter at bar mitzvahs and bat mitzvahs. Okay. And he falls in love with a young mother of a teenage autistic girl. Uh -huh. um, and we, we found this actress, Vanessa Berghart, who's an autistic actress, and she's so wow. brilliant and so talented. And I, I like, feel like we struck gold, and wow. I can't wait for people to see her work. I love the title. It's called the, it's called Cha Cha Real Smooth. Do you all know the Cha Cha Slide? <laughs> Do you have it, Pete? Can you crank it for one second just to get us in the mood a little bit? OK, they're getting it. Wait, do you all remember it? Funky. Everybody clap your hands. Yeah. Clap, 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 clap your hands. Yeah. You feel the clap, energy from this. Clap, now, clap, clap your hands. Cha -cha All right, now, real we going to do the It's a specific now. part of this song that was yes. pulled out. Take what, back, why that title? Well, um, the cha-cha the cha -cha slide, there's one part where you cha-cha real smooth, and that's the part of the song where you get to do your own little boogie. Um, and I think that that's kind of what this movie is about, is the part of your life where you figure out who you are and you do your own thing. I love that. Um, you are obviously the daughter of Melanie Griffith and Don Johnson. Was it in you <laughs> since you were a little girl? Were you like, I'm going to follow them? Or did you originally have like another path? Did you want to sort of not do what your parents did? No, I always wanted to be an actress. You did? Yeah, I was obsessed. I wanted to be, when they were on set, I wanted to be on set. I wanted. I just loved movies. And I was the kind of kid I would watch movies over and over oh, you again. Did? Yeah, like multiple times a day. What was your go-to when you were younger? What like really shaped you, do you think? Mary Poppins. Oh, you did? For it did. sure. And then Home Alone was a big staple. <laughs> the Wizard of Oz. You know, but those, I would watch them like every day for a yeah. couple years and then move on to another one. Wow. Yeah. Well, this is so amazing. I know you have another project in the hopper, too. What else do you have coming out? Yes, Persuasion. Persuasion yeah. is coming out um, in July, July 15th. Oh, God. Wow. You're, I may have gotten that wrong. Well, you're close. You're in the ballpark. Congratulations <laughs> on you. this especially. Cha-Cha Real Smooth, the project you're the most proud of, of everything you've ever done. And maybe when you come back next time with the next project, it might be just another one that you'll maybe. have on your belt. That would be nice. Thank you. You guys, do you love Dakota or what? <laughs> on Apple TV Plus on Friday. That is a lovely young lady. We appreciate her time here in Studio 1A, Dakota Johnson. Thank you. All right, next up, we've got the need for speed, but not Top Gun, the Keanu Reeves Sandra Bullock classic. It's marking its 28th anniversary, and we'll give it its moment from our vault after this. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Allie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Ukraine and Russia. Could you help me understand what's going on? So to help make sense of it, we've created a newscast just for them. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson. Streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Allie Jackson Now. Weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. This is a critical choke point for this fire. And good evening from New Orleans. Nice to really spend some time with you. Appreciate it.
Welcome back. We certainly love Sandra Bullock around here, and today we thought it would be fun to revisit one of her first films, the classic action-packed thriller Speed, which turns 28 this month. And to mark that occasion, here she is talking about it on Today, all the way back in 1994. Bullock got her first big break playing the missing woman in the American remake of The Vanishing. Last year, she played an aspiring country and western singer in The Thing Called Love. You know, I've been sitting here and thinking that um, maybe I'll go to Hollywood, become a movie star. And become a movie star she did. She appeared opposite Sylvester Stallone in Demolition Man. I'm impressed. And now she's back in action in the new movie Speed, co-starring with Keanu Reeves and Dennis Hopper. And this morning, Sandra Bullock's up early. She's at our studios in Burbank. Sandra, good morning. How you doing? <laughs> so far, so good. Oh. Now, what is, now, I didn't write that thing earlier, the one that Katie said, what is this dark-haired, somewhat funny chick label? Where's that from? My mother. No. <laughs> I have no idea. Huh? I have no idea. Are you sure you didn't write it? I swear, I had nothing to do with it. Absolutely okay. nothing. I have I have no idea where the somewhat came from. Okay. Because I would have just had dark haired funny chick. Oh yeah, that know? that label yeah. fits. Yeah, pretty, the hair is dark. Yeah, yeah I, I guess got so. that part of it. Yeah. <laughs> um, is it true that people thought you were a little bit um, off center for taking the co-starring role in this film? Is that is that right? What I hear? Well, I think I think about the whole project. People were a little, um, I don't know, if hesitant or they just they criticized a lot because. Um, I just done Demolition Man, and so taking something like this that quickly afterwards, I think, made people think that I was a little out of my mind, which <laughs> my family's known for years. Um, but it, it was just so good. You can't, you can't afford not to do roles like this when they come along, regardless, you know, if they happen to be in two action movies or if they happen to be in two comedies or in two dramas. You, know, you just you take it when you can get it. So, no, con um, no concerns that Hollywood then labels you a, 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 a action film actress? Not really, because I don't do all that much of the action, you know. I mean, they have the, um, the very strong and capable men to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Hey, look, in, in this film, you play um, Annie, a passenger who, who becomes the driver of a bus that is set to explode if it goes less than 50 miles an hour. Um, let me play devil's advocate. Why would a serious actress want to do such a role? Because it's probably, um, it was probably one of the hardest roles I had to do because you have such a short time in which to establish a character and the, the material was so well written and it was funny and it was edgy and at that time I was so exhausted. I mean, the, the thought of doing something that was going to be so easy and fun to do um, was very appealing. And, and even though it is an action film, even though the action takes precedent over, you know, the development of somebody's, you know, someone's character, um, the short amount of time that you have to sort of establish who you are and what your character is about is is incredibly challenging. You have to get across an emotion within like two seconds and have everyone believe you. So it you don't have the luxury of the words to to um, to help you into the character, and it, it sort of fine tunes you a little bit. I mean, I well, think I came out of it a little more um, trained, actually. Well, let's <laughs> check out your emotion and your driving ability <laughs> in this clip from Speed. Nice work. Nice work. Hey, look, um, in, in, terms, in terms of your career, is, is, this, is this film, are you viewing this as kind of like a springboard to bigger and better? Um, you know, actually, every time I do something, I never look at it as a springboard to anything else because I assume that anything that I'm in, nobody's going to want to go see. Oh, so. come on. No, I mean, you know, I think I've, I've really taken on a very pessimistic attitude, but I, I had such a good time in it, and the the people I just really liked. So I, I would hope that it would do well and that everyone would like it as much as I did, but usually that's not the case. So if, if it is a springboard, that would be really great and I would really appreciate it. But if it isn't, then, you know, I've, I've got enough energy to keep doing this until, 
you know, I do learn how to dive off the <laughs> springboard. Um, look, I got one, one question that has nothing to do with anything other than that I was just curious, looking at your background. You're the mm -hmm. daughter of an opera singer and an opera coach. Mm -hmm. Did you ever come close to having an, any opera ambitions? Nobody wants to hear me sing. Nobody who's ever heard me sing wants to hear me sing. I, oh. I can yell loudly and I benefited from good lungs, but, I got you. you know, nobody wants to hear I got me you. sing. Well, you're a dark-haired, somewhat funny, somewhat singing chick. Yeah. Hey, thanks very much. <laughs> Thank good luck. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, nothing like a good trip to the 90s to put you in a good mood. All right, that's going to do it for today's Pop Star Plus. Another stellar show for you is being produced as we speak, and we'll have it for you tomorrow. Have a great day, everybody. to all our friends watching today all day. Hold a copy. It's our favorite day of the week, Fry Yet. And bonus. Yeah? It's a long weekend. That's it's true. a holiday weekend. Guys, welcome in. It's Today in 30, our half-hour wrap-up of everything from our show this morning. So one highlight, the amazing John Batiste. He rocked the plaza, had an epic concert. He's a five-time Grammy winner. We're going to hear more from him in just a bit. But we are going to start with a look at the economy and the takeaways for all of us after quite the volatile week on Wall Street. Ann Thompson is there covering the very latest for us. Plus, do not forget, y'all, Father's Day is Sunday, and ahead of that special day are today dads, Craig Allen Carson. They took a trip to Coney Island. It was bonding. It was heartwarming and great conversations, and they also hit the rides. We did. You had a special guest on the fourth hour, too. We sure did. Hollywood leading lady Constance Wu. She talked about this new star-studded thriller that she's in, and she talks about, is there going to be a Crazy Rich Asians sequel? Has to be. I think the answer may be right. Yes. Has so, should we get started? Let's do it. It's time, time for Today, Today in 30. 30. NBC's Ann Thompson is right there on Wall Street with the very latest. Hey, Ann, good morning. Good morning, Hoda. The markets are bracing for the end of a volatile week that's rattled both Wall Street and Main Street, shaking the confidence of investors and consumers alike, something acknowledged this morning by President Biden. This morning, President Joe Biden says a recession is not inevitable. In a new interview, Biden acknowledging the pain Americans have felt from the economy and other crises, telling the Associated Press people are really, really down and that the need for mental health in this country has skyrocketed. But Biden's saying there's zero evidence that his own policies, including early COVID relief packages, added to inflation. Biden instead saying the U.S. will overcome inflation. But fears remain. It has been a brutal week on Wall Street. The Dow losing some 740 points Thursday. The Nasdaq and the S&P dropping further into bear territory after the Federal Reserve raised interest rates three quarters of a point to try and stem inflation. And there's a concern that the Fed is going to step too far and slow the economy too much to the point of recession. This morning, there are signs the economy is slowing. Housing starts fell 14.4 percent in May, the lowest level in more than a year. And we spent a little less at restaurants, stores and online. Retail spending down for the first time this year, off three-tenths of a percent last month. Kroger, the nation's largest grocery store chain, says its shoppers are aggressively buying store over name brands. We're seeing customers uh, in a pretty significant way be more aggressive engaging in promotions, uh, using our brands, and uh, really managing how to uh, balance their own budget. And why not? The cost of groceries alone up nearly 12 percent. For the first time, Brandy Wallert is in line at a Fort Worth, Texas food bank. Everything's gone up. 
ending corporate America, Revlon filing Chapter 11 bankruptcy, the first big consumer company to do so since 2020. The cosmetics giant saying supply chain issues and inflation are to blame. And if you were in the market for a new home, well, we don't have good news there either. Mortgage rates this past week jumped more than a half a percent, the biggest jump in more than 30 years. And already this year, mortgage rates have more than doubled. Hoda and Craig. All right, Ann Thompson for us there on Wall Street. And thank you. Now to the hectic summer travel season with the next big holiday weekend, the 4th of July, fast approaching. But a lot of folks know right now air travel's already gotten off to a very rocky start. NBC's Tom Costello joins us now from Reagan National with a look at how airlines are trying to turn the beat around. Hey, Tom. You guys don't have a pilot's license, do you? Because they can <laughs> use you right now. The airlines... Every airline says they are short on pilots right now, and it's going to take a while to fill those pilot seats. And so as a result, as we've reported, they've been trimming their schedules, sometimes parking planes. That's been a problem, and it's not going to go away anytime soon. The other issue, staffing issues. The sources are telling us the FAA is going to surge air traffic controllers, 30 of them, into Jacksonville to deal with a critical choke point right there in Florida as we're in the thick of the travel season. For Americans hoping to get away this summer, the 4th of July is the next big opportunity. But it's also traditionally one of the busiest times of the year to fly. And already, the season is off to a rough start. Just yesterday, 1,700 flight cancellations nationwide. At New York's LaGuardia Airport, 40% of outgoing flights canceled due to weather. It follows a very turbulent start to the summer travel season. At the end of the day, they've got to deliver. Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg met with top airline execs late Thursday, telling them to avoid a repeat of the chaos on Memorial Day when airlines canceled 2,700 flights and to ensure smooth sailing for next month and beyond. The airlines got a lot of aid during the pandemic. You believe now they need to improve their performance. Look, uh, a lot of taxpayer funding went to the aviation sector to keep these airlines up and running. Now the demand is coming back. It's no small challenge to get up and running, but uh, uh, I have uh, high expectations that uh, the airlines will be able to meet that challenge. The airlines say they always strive to provide a safe and seamless journey. Nationally, passenger levels have rebounded this month to nearly 90% of pre-pandemic travel. And in Florida, an even bigger surge. All of the state's major airports surpassing 2019 figures. Meanwhile, airlines have struggled to meet demand with a severe pilot shortage, forcing many to trim their schedules and even ground planes. I sat on the floor and cried for a good 10 minutes because there is no answer. Polly Gupta says she feels defeated after her flight to bring her teenage son from New York to Florida for an international geography competition was canceled. No explanation from the airline. He's a brilliant student. He deserved to be there. If you're already at the airport and run into cancellations or delays, experts advise getting in line for a gate agent while at the same time trying to call the airline. And check self-service tools in your airline's app to see if you've already been rebooked or if you should rebook yourself. You kind of have to be an octopus when you're dealing with these flight situations and you're at the airport. A lot, of, a lot of things to think about there, Tom. So with yeah. fewer flights, are the prices going up? Oh, oh, yeah. I mean, if you've flown domestically over the last few, few weeks, you've seen it, right? We're up 30% year over year from 2019, I should say. 2019, pre-pandemic, up 30%, up 6% just since April. There are indications prices are starting to come down with the economy in, in a rough patch right now. But yeah, we've been paying a lot more. And oh, by the way, Secretary Buttigieg apparently told the airline CEOs yesterday he wants to see accountability. If they publish a schedule, if people buy tickets according to that schedule, they need to meet the schedule, period. He wants to see them do exactly that. And he wants to see them take care of customers when you do have cancellations and delays like we saw yesterday at LaGuardia, guys. Be nice to see that happen. All right, Tom, thank you so much. What would you like to see from the federal government to keep Buffalo safe? If there is legislation brought to you to ban contraception, would you sign it? What should be focused on that could reduce inflation and avoid a recession? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press.
At 73, Prince Charles is still waiting for the job that is his birthright. Do we want Charles? Do we want a monarchy? I'm Keir Simmons, and we'll take on these questions and more in our new podcast, Born to Rule. Listen now. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson. Streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now? What it all means for you for an hour every day? It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Allie Jackson now. Weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Women's basketball has been systematically held back. After 49 years of Title IX, we still have work to do. In Their Court, a podcast from NBC News and NBC Sports that goes inside the issues of inequality in women's sports. Listen now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. We are back with Today Celebrates Dads. And as we head into Father's Day weekend, it's time for one of our favorite annual traditions. The Today Dads get together and they reflect on fatherhood. And of course, you guys, you have a lot of fun, I think, right? Like beer involved. <laughs> this, this year we made a short trip over to the world famous Coney Island. There was surf, sand, there was even a cyclone, which, uh, which some of us will never forget. Here we are. Here we are, guys. Coney That's Island. Mission continues. You've been yeah. to Coney Island a lot? I you know, I came here when I was, uh, literally, this was it, 63 years ago. This is a, a place where families come. Yeah. I think there's no better place to talk about being fathers and yeah. uh, without our children. <laughs> <laughs> the Coney Island Boardwalk and Luna Park Amusement Park have been an iconic part of New York City summers for more than 130 years. And the infamous Cyclone Roller Coaster has been terrifying beachgoers for almost that long. And today, that includes us. All right, guys, here we are at the famous Cyclone That's roller coaster, it. which the warning sign says any person with a back, neck, or heart problems should not ride the ride. That's me. So let me walk you down <laughs> to oh, your, your guy. lovely Great. seats here. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Are we secure? OK, they'll, they'll, they'll take care of that. I don't know. Have you ever been in a wooden roller coaster before? No, honestly, I have not. Oh, really? Never. Oh, well, you're in for a treat. You know those smooth, uh, beautiful, tubular roller yeah. coasters? That, this is not that. Oh. For See, Daily, tell the world our story. All right. All right good luck. Good luck, boys. Do you feel yeah. it rocking and oh, back and forth? Oh, is... oh, now it comes the ratcheting oh, part. Okay. Here yes. we go. Get ready, baby. Don't you this scream. is it. Look oh, at God. that view. Oh, God. Here we go. Oh, God. Oh, oh God. Oh, baby, that's a roller coaster. Craig's looking a little green. Oh, oh, oh. How was it? Oh, that's good. Man, I, got, I mean, you don't really expect a 100-year roller coaster to pack that kind of punch. Woo! All right, I'm glad we did that. All right, <laughs> let's go play some games, something yeah, simple. Yeah, good idea. Yes. Something a little easier. Well, yes, of course. Boardwalk games, simple, classic, easy, or not. Hey, guys, you guys want to play? Yeah. Sure. Let's do it. All right, let's go, Uncle Al. Let's go, Al. Come on now. Oh, oh just a bit low. Oh, 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 oh. All right, hey. I'm worried about this one. Oh, just as bad as me. Oh, at least I knocked one down. All right, come on, Carson. Come on, Carson. Okay. Here we go. Yes, your back's just fine. Oh, you got a did a lot better than we did. Oh, can, can he have that one? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I love it. Oh, wow. All right, let's go. Let's, let's go. Roll. Congratulations, guys. Woo! Our last stop of the day, Coney Island's own Brooklyn Cyclones Baseball Stadium. 
Oh, I like Ooh. the sound. The magic. Oh, yeah, this is it. Oh, hey, oh, that's look at a this. magical door. Wow. Oh, this is pretty cool. Wow. See, Daly, what position did you play? Left out. <laughs> <laughs> I was terrible at baseball. Did you play? Second base. Yeah. I was, really? about, I was about as good as you. Yeah. But well, from the way you threw that beanbag. Wow. 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 Nice. Daly. I didn't think baseball little, was a little throwback to, to earlier in the piece. Yeah, it was good. I, I like that. that. Very impressive. You're welcome. It's one of my favorite traditions, fellas. I know. Sitting around. Baseball? Well, no. <laughs> well, that too. Talking, talking about fatherhood. Yeah. How's the last year been as a, uh, as a dad since we did this? It's been good. It's been great. I mean, um, my two-year-old now is really coming into her own. It's becoming like a little person. Uh, my girls have been into theater and singing and dancing, and Jackson just graduated from seventh grade, and it just, it all, it's all happening so fast. It's been a heck of a year. You know, Dell's eight now, and I was able to to coach his basketball team. You know, he's, and I got to see up close, like the kind of man he's becoming. And Sibby's, uh, you know, she just she graduated from preschool yesterday. Yeah. So now she'll start kindergarten. One of the big changes since last year is that my both of my children have become aware of race mm. but now how are they aware of it what's an example there was some sort of conversation going on in the house and Sibby said to my son who's darker than she is Sibby's like well Dilly, you're you're black like daddy and I'm, I'm white like mommy and in the moment I was like you know I'm kind of proud that up until now they had no idea yeah. and we talked about race and being biracial uh, how the world is going to view you versus how you're you know, viewed in this in this house. Mm -hmm. uh, but it led to a nice teachable moment. Yeah, it's funny, I, you know, it's no secret, I had that bout with prostate cancer and it was the first time I saw fear in my children's eyes. Mm -hmm. You know, they, I mean, they started crying. At the end of the day, that's all you want to do is protect them right. and, and shield them from hurt and or harm. Yep. And at that moment I realized, you know, you can't always do that, but you can do the best you can. And that's what I know our fathers did. Yep. Yep. Uh, and that's all we can do. And I'm 48. My dad died when he was 46. I was five when he died. Think about that, you know, the going through chemo, the hiding it from us, you know, we didn't really even know. All the days the doctor calls, the, how scared he must have been, my mom going through this with young kids. And yet our childhood seems so normal. And I think about that now, to your point, yeah. as I get older, I'm just like, you know that company that I think they make t-shirts says like no bad days? Right. Like I have to constantly remind like no bad days. No bad days. Yeah. No bad days ever, considering you know what my family went through. That's right. You keep saying that. It makes me sad. I think, guys, I think they're calling me in for relief. Wow. <laughs> is, that, is, that, is that what that is? Yeah, I just got this. Oh, okay. oh the yeah. That's right. No, You're off. They're, they're, saying, you they're saying we're running out of time. Happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day. I love Day. you guys. Love this you. is my favorite thing of the year. Love I really is. Love this. Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Hey, who's this? Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. We're here to start conversations about the big things happening in our world. Because it's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. At 73, Prince Charles is still waiting for the job that is his birthright. Do we want Charles? Do we want a monarchy? I'm Keir Simmons, and we'll take on these questions and more in our new podcast, Born to Rule. Listen now. What would you like to see from the federal government to keep Buffalo safe? If there is legislation brought to you to ban contraception, would you sign it? What should be focused on that could reduce inflation and avoid a recession? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Ukraine and Russia. Could you help me understand what's going on? So to help make sense of it, we've created a newscast just for them. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. We'll meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Hey, who's this? Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. The man 
Bryant himself, Mr. Yeah. John Batiste. Oh. Wow. John, that was an unbelievable performance. And and what, what always impresses me, no matter where I, when I've seen you perform, it is the power of positivity and joy mm -hmm. that seems to pervade everything you do. Yes. Joy is, is hard to come by. And I believe that it should be celebrated when you have it, and it should be shared. And that's it. The performance is a way for people to connect to light in a very dark time, to connect to joy. And I, I love that. It's, it's such a, a calling for me, and, and I love to give to the people and serve the people in that way. Your energy is just unbelievable. We all look at you and say, I mean, every second. So you talk about your dad a lot and motivation and your family. Is that where you get your, when you wake up in the morning, I'm going to go do this and conquer the day? I, I believe we have such a great opportunity being alive. And even when it's the, the lowest moments, it's a beautiful thing to just have the ability to wake up and do something. I, you feel it. It's electric. Yeah. I just get out of bed and I feel that that's such a great opportunity. I don't want to waste it. And that's it. How are you spending Father's Day? What are you going to do Sunday? I, I always call my, my, my dad, my, my grandfather. I, I'm blessed to have him. He was with me at the Grammys when we won. Right. Was uh, 90 years old. Yes. And I call him and I just listen to him tell stories. Or I call my dad. We talk almost every day and I just listen to the stories because, you know, they'll say stuff and think that it's something that I know. Yeah. But it'll be a, an incredible story. Like, well, we went into the studio with Isaac Hayes and he just came and recorded. <laughs> he was just hanging out. And I was like, wait, what? <laughs> You know, they tell stories, and it's an amazing thing to, to learn your own lineage and your own heritage. Mm -hmm. So that's what Father's Day really symbolizes for me. What? Go ahead. Oh, no, I was just going to ask the best advice he's ever given you. Um, tell the truth. Tell be the yourself. Truth. Um, believe in God. There's a higher power. So don't get too caught up on the small stuff. You know, in, in listening to your music, there is, it feels a lot like we're in church. It, in, but the, the, the most joyful parts of, of faith. Is, does that guide you? Absolutely. It's, it's a important and the most important guiding force in my life because I think that the best way to love people is to know that you are divine. You are a special being. Everybody is special. Eight billion people in the world and everybody is special and unique. That's why all people have something to say and something of value to give this world. And if you guide your life from that place, it makes decisions a lot clearer. It's not easier but it makes things very clear. And when I get on stage, it's almost, it's a utopia because it's, it's all of the best things in life that you can bring to bear. Even the, even the sadness, even the, the, the wistful feelings are, are great. Uh -huh. And it's, it's an incredible place to, to be able to come. It's a sacred space. This stage is a sacred space. And these people are, are, are my, my people. These are my family. Yes, there you go. In fact, this song you're going to do a little later, Cry, I mean, there, there's some mournful parts of that, but then there's still joy in it. Absolutely. I think you have to have the darkness to come to the light. You have to have the, the, the lows to reach the peaks in life. Yes. And, and you have to appreciate a, a, a good low point in your life. I always, I always say that. That's important to appreciate a good low point in your life. What's next? I mean, how do, how do you follow up album of the year? <laughs> <laughs> Just keep on creating. Keep on doing your thing from a place of purity and love and, and, you know, figure out how to be the best you can at the craft. I work on the craft every day of my life. Ah. And, and that's it. You know, if you keep doing that, putting in the work, I believe good things happen. Last time you were here, you taught everyone a two-step. I wasn't oh, yeah. here that time, so maybe you could take can us you, out with a little move. Can you look? Look, all you got to do, it's an easy thing you can do. You just put your heel out uh -huh. and then come back and put that one out. That's, That's all doing. See, the first part was easy. Yeah. Bang. See, the first tricky. It kind of, you know, Muhammad Ali had the two. Oh! You walk with it. John Batiste. John Batiste. Hello. Hey, uh, Jamel. Amazing performance later this hour. Stay tuned for that. Always good to see you, bro. Oh, yeah, Jamel. Always, Happy always good Day. to see you. John Batiste, one more time, folks. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Let's go. Good evening from New Orleans. Nice to really spend some time with you. Appreciate it.
Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Let's go. This is a critical choke point for this fire. And good evening from New Orleans. Nice to really spend some time with you. Appreciate it. What would you like to see from the federal government to keep Buffalo safe? If there is legislation brought to you to ban contraception, would you sign it? What should be focused on that could reduce inflation and avoid a recession? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Okay, it was four years ago when Constance Wu became a breakout star as the leading uh. lady in this classic rom-com. It's the best. It's called, of course, Crazy Rich Asians. Yeah, now Constance is adding a little drama to her life, playing a journalist in the action-packed new series, The Terminal List, alongside her co-star Chris Pratt, who plays a Navy SEAL. Take a look. I brought up your troops' deployment pattern because of overwork and exhaustion played a part in your man's death. I don't think that's your fault, but there are people who need to be held responsible right, for you that. Go. Listen, I know you think I'm the enemy, but all I care about is the truth. And if a broken system put you and your men in a situation... Thank you for your time, Ms. Burnett. I appreciate you stopping by. Oh, oh my gosh. That's it. We're already hooked. Yeah, we're that, in. Well, 20 <laughs> we're seconds. In. It's all we're it took. In. We want to talk about the terminal in a second, but we do want to talk about that recent speech that you gave at Cornell. Yes, we we thought this it. was really cool oh, because you talked about how owning the I don't know. So many people try to fake it. They always say, fake it till you make it, you know, but ha being bold and brave enough to say those words, I don't yeah, know. Especially when you're young and you're yeah. first entering the workforce, you can feel very insecure, and especially with social media, seeing people post about their perfect lives. Yeah. Sometimes there's pressure to to know everything and to seem like you're totally in control. And I think it can be very empowering and almost kind of freeing and funny to just be like, you know what, I actually don't know that. Yes. Can you help me? You, you know what's funny? I have two kids, uh, five and three. Yeah. And when they don't know something, I read this book and the title of the book is well, I guess I haven't learned that yet. Oh, so I said, that's right. instead of saying instead of saying faking it, just say, well, yeah. I guess what, what about that? Yeah. I guess I haven't learned that yet. Yeah, like, and, and it opens up and an opens opportunity for you to learn, and then you're generally living in less fear because it's okay to not know. Social media is something that I think a lot of parents uh, struggle with. Yeah, like you want to obviously show that you know you're enjoying your life and, and show your kids to your family and whoever else follows you, but there are limits. So how have you kind of navigated that? Yeah, it's interesting because, I, I mean, I'm a 90s kid, yeah. right? So I didn't grow up with social media. Yes. Um, and it's something that I uh, sort of am still figuring out. And like you just said, you want to show how great your life is. I think it's interesting that we only show that. Yeah. Because great. I think that could make... That could be really isolating. Mm -hmm. And so I'm actually not on social media. Yeah, so you, got, you had a big presence and you got, and you got off. Yeah. How do you feel yeah. off? I mean, I really did that for the sake of my mental health. Yeah. yeah. And um, it's honestly, it's a lot more peaceful. There's yeah. a lot less pressure. And it feels more intuitive to me because I grew up in the 90s. Yes. This is not to judge any like Gen Z kids yeah, for whom this is their right. primary. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah. This is how they learn. But I grew up on phone calls, you know, yeah. and voicemails. Yeah. Like, yeah. we talk about Crazy Rich Agents. Yes. We were talking about, I was saying that's one movie I wish I could see again for the first time because yeah. there's Aww. something about it yeah. that just like filled mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. oh, but I can you. maybe see the second one for the first time. <laughs> yeah, is there going to be a I yes. see the second one for the first happening? time. When it comes out. <laughs> okay. Is that, you think it's a long time from now? Um, I don't think it's a long time from <gasps> now. I mean, we haven't started shot. You haven't filming. shot it? Oh, you haven't started filming? <laughs> no. So it is a long time from now. You know, you never know, because Hustlers, we shot that in the spring. Yeah. And That's it came out that Lopez. same, <laughs> with Jennifer Lopez. Yeah, we, it came out that either. same fall. Okay, so it we could do. Okay. okay, can we talk about Terminal? Because yeah. we haven't talked about yes, that yet. Right. The whole Listen, point that so you're good. here. Yeah. yeah. Um, you play this this journalist yeah. alongside Chris Pratt. Mm -hmm. So how was that dynamic? Oh, it was great. I yeah. mean, 
One thing um, people maybe don't know is Chris and I had babies around the same yeah. time. His uh, wife, yeah. uh -huh. Catherine, had uh -huh. Lila around the same time I had my daughter. Um, and so, you know, when we weren't acting, we were just, like, trading baby stories. Yeah. And he was so caring about, like, my needs as a mother, whether I had That's to go so and pump great. or, like, get on a call with the pediatrician, oh, whatever right. it was. Yeah. Um, and so that was great. And the, the show itself was really fun because I always like to do something different from my previous yeah. show, which had been Hustlers, yes. where I played a stripper. <laughs> and then I go from stripper to war journalist. I'm like, that's it. That there, was there's a, a turn. spectrum. That was a turn. Yeah. And, it, yeah. and, and is it true that your next role is yeah. musical? Yes, my next role is a movie musical with Javier Bardem. What? And a singing crocodile. So that's for kids? It is for it's it's Lyle Lyle Crocodile. Oh, yes, you know those yes. children's oh, I love those. Wait, yeah. so you sing too? Yeah, yeah. I kind of grew up doing musical theater, so we I can tell. You know that. that's weird. Why? Just by your Her voice, voice, I can tell you're a singer. It wasn't my yeah. jazz hands that tipped you off. <laughs> like, like. What do you sing to your little little one at night? Oh, I mean, honestly, she just likes. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. Or though when she was really little, for some reason, this is so weird. I'm talking when she was like six weeks old. Yeah. The Star Spangled Banner would calm her down. Really? Would it? I have no, I think it was like the marching really, of, of yeah. it, because I would march yeah, yeah, and yeah, sing it, and then she would just calm down. Oh. It doesn't work anymore, but it works <laughs> I was going to say, while. there's mothers across the country yeah. that are like, <laughs> I'm like, God, I am such an American baby. Like, wow. Wow. Um, oh thank, my you, gosh, thank you, Constance. Thanks, Thanks for visiting with us. We love we watching it. your star rise. Yeah, we sure oh, do. Thank incredible. you so much. And the Terminal List premieres July 1st on Prime Video. Join us on Monday, guys. We're kicking off another big week on today, so we'll see you then. Bye-bye. Have a great week. We are throwing a family food festival. We got Al, we got Carson, we got Jack Daly. They love cooking with their kids. Yeah. They've got some great recipes to share. Uh, just in time for the big day. Okay. You may have already caught Al and his son Nick cooking it up in their home kitchen on their social media show called What We're Cooking. And Carson's son Jackson has culinary skills too, just like his parents. Al and Carson's passion for cooking come from their own dads, Albert Lincoln Roker and Richard Caruso, who both love to grill and eat. Oh, guys, now we can't wait. All right, let's. who are we going to start with? What, what do you say we start with Al? What are you making? Yeah. Well, guys, uh, doing something kind of Mediterranean. I'm doing uh, doing lamb ribs, uh, and I love these. I, I, I met a, a, a shepherd believe it or not, a guy who is uh, a shepherd in Virginia named Craig Rogers, and he turned me on to these. And it's a cheaper cut of beef, uh, of lamb, I should say. So basically, you take these ribs, Ooh, they, they come cut already, check with your butcher, they'll be fantastic. And and you can do a rub, like we've got uh, any kind of Mediterranean spice, including uh, lemon zest, we've got some cinnamon, we've got, we've got uh, sugar, salt, okay. uh, a, a little bit of everything in here, and you're just gonna rub it on very, really very generously. Mm -hmm. Now, I also like to use, you can also use a, a commercial one. I, this one, Hasty Bake, is good. Uh, anything that has kind of a Mediterranean flavor. And and basically, you just cake this on. It's simplicity unto itself because it's just like making regular ribs. It's going to be low and slow. You get your, you don't want to put these directly on the heat. So what I've done is, if you can see over here, the, the main part of the grill is over 400 degrees, but this this side is only about 250, 225, and you're going to put the lamb ribs in here, and you move them around every, oh, I'd say 30 minutes. You don't even have to baste them because they're fairly fatty, and they come out looking something like this. Wow. What? Oh, my God. Now, wow. Oh, yes. Hey, Roker, oh, yes. Roker, oh, yes. If you're oh, not, yes. If you're not good. a lamb guy, yes, sir. can you swap out? Could you use pork or beef? If you're, you if could swap out for for beef or pork, but everybody does beef or pork ribs. Do something different. And then you want to pair that with a nice asparagus. Okay? Wow. And you're just going to, and some people uh, peel them. I cut them off at the, right there at the base. They get a little shorter. And then you just take some olive oil. You pour that on. Ooh. Very simply. A little salt. I don't salt. even like A little asparagus. pepper. And then you, you, I know you don't like, a lot of people, Jack, don't like asparagus, <laughs> but once you grill it,
and it only takes about five or six okay. minutes, and it yeah. comes out looking like mm -hmm. this. And Looks it's really good. tasty. It's oh. crisp. It's Perfect crunchy. Meal. And you just, you're gonna, you're gonna love that. Uh -huh. It's really Ooh, good. Like and God, by the way, guys, you can, you Makes can do this if you don't have your grill going. You can put them in your oven <laughs> and let it go again, uh -huh. 225, 250 for mm. about three hours. All right. There's Mr. Roker's recipe. Wow. That, was, that was fantastic, buddy. I wish I could, <laughs> wish I could take a bite. Uh, Carson, so, so thank you, got, thank you, Carson thank you very and Jack are up now, and you guys yeah. have some special taste testers in the kitchen. Is that right? We do. We got the girls over here. We're going to bring them in in a minute. But how do you follow that up? Uncle Al is the Yoda to our Skywalker when it comes to cooking. So we're going to pair those delicious <laughs> lamb ribs with something just a little bit different than the asparagus. We're going to do a like a, a, a Mexican uh, corn, basically off the cob. And uh, let's just get right into it. We've got Siri here on our second cam. So Bingo, if you can come around. We're going to take, I'm using canned corn. You can use canned corn or frozen corn. You want to dry off the corn a little bit so that way we can brown it up. Uh -huh. We're going to pop it in the skillet here. You can hear it. It's sizzling. Mm -hmm. We'll put it here just to brown it all up. We'll get that corn nice and brown. Uh, by the magic of TV, we'll walk back over here. We already have that corn brown right here. And then we're going to add to it. This is a little Mexican crema and mayonnaise concoction. That's going to go down in the corn just oh, wow. like that. Then we're going to take our spices. We've got uh, cumin, paprika, chili powder, and some cayenne. That's going to go in there. We've got some lime juice that's going to go in there. Some fresh cilantro. This is the magic right here, mm. cilantro. And then a little bit of garlic, too, guys. Mm. All that's going to go in. We're going to mix this all up. We've got the graphics department dessert coming up next. So that's going to do that. A little salt, a little, little pepper. pepper. We're going to top, top it with some yeah. uh, Cotilla cheese on top and a little lime zest. Mm. Boom. That is what we're talking about, Yum. guys. Look at that. That's that nice. That with the lamb ribs is going nice. to be, that's going to be delicious. All right. Oh. Uh, Jack D, go for that's it. That's beautiful. Okay. Okay. So what are you making? I'm making like a s'mores dip. So for someone who like doesn't know how to cook Ooh. and loves s'mores, it's like s'mores nachos. Oh. So you take... Reese's oh, peanut butter really? cups Reese's. and put them down on a flat iron skillet. We do a lot of s'mores. This is like a yeah, constructed we do a version. So. so you put um, them down in a flat iron skillet. Then you top them with marshmallows. Mm. So. Okay, I'm just going to help out. Wow. Mm -hmm. Time, we're going to top it. This is like a TV. Yep. And then what are you going to do with this? You're going to pop, pop this in the oven? And then you throw it in the oven for about uh, 450. Four fifty. At 450 for about like four minutes. All right, okay. so we're going to do that. We're going to pop it in the oven, and then, again, that's the TV. We've got what the that? beauty product. Look at oh, that. Oh, my wow. gosh. Look at that. Girls, come here. Wow. Mm, that is and fantastic. Then, Go ahead, Jack. And then you break up some graham crackers mm -hmm. as, like, dip, like chips. Yeah, so you're going to just basically uh, dip it. And then, personally, I also on, like guys. to have Oreos. Of course. And, of course. Um, <laughs> and another whipped cream. Get in there, guys. That's hot. Okay, wait, so don't dunk do that. Get in there. I want to see. Yeah, so come on. Let's see what it looks like. It. That looks dunk good. Bingo, can you get in there? Yeah, oh, look at that. Yeah. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that bite right there. Uh, That's s'mores delicious. S'mores for breakfast yeah. all the day. Like yeah, oh, we want to say happy Father's Day to all you fathers out there. All you father figures out there for that for that much. And um, That's right. I've had two incredible fathers. Um, uh, Al, you've been blessed as well. Uh, I love talking about uh, my dad with you and Craig when we do our Father's Day thing. So happy Father's Day to you fellas. And I want to tell my children I love you guys so much. They're not listening, but that's okay. And to Bingo, who often is like a father figure to me as well. Happy Father's Day. Siri Daly on the second yeah. camera. Indeed. And Goldie in the house somewhere too, I'm sure. All oh, yeah, right. Goldie's here too. Daly, we want to say thanks. Thanks to you, Al, for all the recipes and more. Be sure to check out today.com slash food. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. This is a critical choke point for this fire. And good evening from New Orleans. Nice to really spend some time with you. Appreciate it. Cover the news, you have to be in it. These are families trying to board those trains to Poland. I also want to get home. You'll get home. Every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now.
Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Allie Jackson Now. Weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. A surprise trip to New Orleans changed Jason Santos' life. He fell in love with the flavors and the food. That's right. It inspired his first cookbook, Buttermilk and Bourbon, which is also combo. the name of his Boston restaurant. Today he's got a kicked up brunch dish that would be perfect for dad. Yes. I think my husband would have a heart attack if I made something so lovely. I think you should. I want to learn how to do it. It's super simple. We're going to do a deviled egg toast, a nice, beautiful focaccia with some country ham, some pickled hot peppers. Yeah. Um, and we're going to go in the pickled peppers. Super okay. easy. Beautiful peppers. You can pick them in the beginning of the season. Pickle them. They'll last in your fridge forever. That's such a good idea. Yeah. So these, just a little bit of oil. You can use sweet peppers or spicy peppers. And then what we'll do is we'll just put these on. Plop those. Yeah, we're gonna char them up. You want them to be still raw, but nice and charred. So then so we're gonna pickle them. How long do you keep them on here? Probably four or five minutes. They get a nice sort of caramelization. You can see here. And once they're done, we're gonna take them off, cool them, and then we're gonna sort of dice them up. Okay. And then here I have some cider vinegar, a little bit of water, garlic, salt, and black pepper. Mm -hmm. So this is sort of our pickling solution. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna bring that to a boil. We will dump it over. The peppers. Are you a pickling fan? Do you pickle a lot? I am. I'm not crazy about it. Yeah. Like, as far as what we do, I'm more particular. And I think peppers, really, the heat sort of balances the heat a little bit. Mm -hmm. So pickle peppers here, vinegar, put it in the fridge two days. Once it's out of the fridge, we're going to drain off the vinegar, and we're going to add some olive oil. And wow. this will sort of preserve them and be like a marinated pepper grade for, like, an yes. pasta. Yes, then they're good for... All Indefinitely in your yes. fridge, yeah. So you could do this with tomatoes or whatever you have in your garden. So some spicy these, peppers here. This is good if you want to try one. They definitely have a little bit of a kick for sure. Okay, I'm nervous. But the, the vinegar and the oil is really good. It I'll kind of preserves know. them. Let me know how spicy. And then Level we're going to get up here to this beautiful deviled egg set. <laughs> you okay? Woo, fire extinguisher. <laughs> you need I water? I personally I'm have never met a deviled egg that I haven't liked. So okay. this is sort of my version of a deviled egg. Okay, if I love the deviled egg. Good? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so, deviled egg, country ham, some char grilled butter, beautiful eggs. So 10 minutes, boiling water, dropping mm -hmm. the eggs. I put a little bit of salt mm -hmm. and a little vinegar, and that helps to sort of the shell dislocate from the protein oh, of so the Savannah, egg. this is how yeah. you uh, boil, boil I know. Egg. Well, right. I Google so this it is how you every year egg. for Easter. Okay. Day one culinary school, right? Yeah. Boiled <laughs> ice water, most important Did thing. Why? What does the ice So the ice stops the cooking process and also shocks the egg. That way... The shell will kind of come off the egg, makes it way Where easier. Where were you to peel. on Easter? I needed this. I think back in the day, our moms would just pour it under cold yeah, water like, in the sink, and it made it really difficult. She didn't even put it under cold water. I didn't. I yeah, didn't. so I mean, you could be peeling that for a month. You know? I, I'm but this still makes peeling. it really easier. <laughs> yeah. So, beautiful eggs here. So, I'm just going to dice these up, okay. not overcooked. Okay. So, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this great deviled egg mayonnaise. So, okay. same thing as a great condiment. Mm -hmm. You can use it for whatever you like. So mayonnaise. Okay, mm. plop it in there. Oh. We're gonna mix it. Worcestershire, oh. hot sauce, mm. lemon juice, and Dijon. So if you could just whisk that up for me, I that would be great. Everything that you just put in there. And so we have the diced deviled eggs, and down here I have a little salad we're gonna garnish the focaccia with. So okay. once that's all mixed, is that the dressing? Or that's what? the dressing. This, okay. Yeah. So this is something you can keep in your fridge as a sort of great mayonnaise dressing. Mm. So this is all the flavors of the deviled egg. Normally you take out the yolk, puree yes. it, pipe it back in. So we have all that mixed. It's and then kind we're of like the lazy here. woman's deviled egg, which I, I really like. Past you and yeah, yeah. So here, focaccia, nice and grilled. I'm going to take my egg salad and yeah. my country ham. So you could okay. use prosciutto, serrano ham, mm -hmm. country ham, whatever you like. Mm. Yeah. Put the egg salad on. Mm -hmm. You could cut this smaller for a nice little canopy. Wait, what's that? That's a char grilled butter, yeah. So oh, we're going to smear that, that over yeah. the top. Mm. What's this other thing over here, this little beauty? So these are baby back ribs. Oh. Uh, same pickled peppers we use, a little Carolina mustard, and these are unbelievable Cajun Bloody Marys. Mm. This one, That's one of those over. This, yeah. oh, you want a Bloody Mary? I do. Why not? Oops, there goes the garnish. Yeah. All right, Jason, really thank you thank so you. much. And this would make any dad's Sunday dream. Mm. Yeah. All Delicious. right, to get these recipes, go to today.com slash food. We're back, today food. And here's a public service announcement, ladies. Father's Day. This Sunday. Right. We won't forget. Okay. 
So if you're looking for a meal that's sure to impress your dad, get your grill ready because we've got just what you need. Darnell Ferguson is the chef and owner of Super Chef Restaurants. He's also a very proud dad of eight kids, some of whom are joining him this morning. Darnell, thanks for having us. First of all, do us a favor, introduce us to the kids that are there, and then tell us what you love, uh, why you love cooking with them so much. All right, so we have Legend Ali right here. You want to say hi? Legend. We got Nelly, who just, he just eats, he doesn't cook. <laughs> uh, we got Lamaya, Lola, Trinity, my wife, Tatata, and Nori, the baby, right over here. Wow. And as you can tell, Legend, who's a chef, likes to walk away. But, yeah, so today we're going to be doing some grilled corn. I got Legend, who is growing up to be a chef, right? <laughs> we got our Timmy cherry shrimp right here. Ooh. This was supposed to be something super easy that the kids can do and the fathers can kind of sit down, but it's a little better than like hot dogs. Right. There you go. He wants to try. Darnell, there you what, go. what is it about this, th this recipe that, that you like, especially for Father's Day? Well, it's, it's creative. It's easy as ever. So it doesn't take a long time to prep. And it's something you can trust the kids. See, he's just playing around. It's something you can trust the kids <laughs> to do without actually, like, getting hurt. It's a very easy dish, fun, and it's different, man. This Father's Day, we got to turn it up, man. The COVID, fathers need a special treat because we had to be home with those kids 24-7. So you know we're doing something special now. <laughs> and, and you know you have eight so I got my kids when right you're... here with the chimichurri. You know you've got eight kids when you're letting one of them just, you know, yes, just based right on the grill there. I noticed the corn has the husk on. Did, did you... I mean, how, do, how does it cook? Do you keep the husk on and then peel it back? Yes. Yeah, so we soaked the corn for 24 hours in water, cooked it with the husk on, then took the husk off of it, and I actually got the grill marks that I wanted on there. And then we'll take it over to the table, and I'll let the girls show you how to make it to some really good street corn over here. So Don't, Trinity is going to – yes. That, uh, why, why soak it for 24 hours? What does that do to it? You don't want the husk to burn up on you. Oh. You can go ahead and start, girls. You don't want that husk to burn up on you. So we're putting a little garlic aioli on top mm. of the corn now. You go ahead, Maya. We got a little smoked paprika going mm. on. <laughs> Legend, there's a cheese. Maya's got a heavy hand. <laughs> <There's laughs> cheese. What kind of cheese is that? This is Parmesan. Usually you'll see Cotiga, but I want a little more flavor. So we got a little Parmesan cheese. Mm -hmm. Lola's putting some cilantro on mm. there for me right now. And then this is the star of the show, the candy bacon. Oh. Every father loves bacon. You know, that is it. You want to go ahead and put some amazing. tomatoes on top, girls? Roker's favorite food there. Just throw them on there. There you go. Throw them on top of the uh, shrimp. <laughs> it's just hands and you go. all over the place. They work so well together, too, yeah, your fun. kids. It is something they can all do. Darnell, how long did yeah. that shrimp uh, barbecue for? Well, you cook the shrimp on each side for about five minutes on the grill. We got the chimichurri sauce, which is the cilantro, the parsley, the mm. habaneros, and everything just blended up. It's very simple. Season it. Cook it on both sides. You just want to base it inside of the um, chimichurri sauce. And then it's the street corn. Really fun, easy, something the kids can't mess up. <laughs> you know, I like a little more garlic aioli, if you ask me, so I can just go right back on there. Yep. Put a little more on top of there. There you go. He can wants to try. try? Legend. <laughs> Darnell, do any of your kids jump off that waterfall into the pool? Oh, yes. They're all, they're so anxious to get in the pool right now. So that's half the issue we have of containing them, but they see water. So. Uh, this is a, a great snapshot of Father's Day. Oh, yeah. Right yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. <laughs> yes. Well, so, like you say, this is the easy thing to do for Father's Day. It is something different. It's not just hot dogs and hamburgers, you yeah. know? Well, of course it's easy for you, Darnell. Look at how many helpers you have. <laughs> you don't have to do any work. Yeah, so, out of free time labor. Crew here, man. Full yeah, time it, crew working. Yeah. You wear it well, man. You work hard. Just, just grill and chill. Darnell, thanks so much. Happy Father's Day to you. Oh, thank you. Same to everybody over there. All right, cool. Thank you. And 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 say goodbye no to your wife for us as well and the kids. All right, check out that recipe today. Dot com slash food. All right, SG. Uh, that is all the time we have on a Friday morning. Good to see you. Oh, but we have. We have time for you to explain your Father's Day blazer. Oh, real oh. quick. Delano picked it out two years ago and gave me uh, gave me this gift for Father's Day, so I wear it once a year oh. the Friday before. He I so. thought he was going to the Kentucky Derby. I, I, I'm going to do that, too, in this jacket <laughs> next year. He is watching, so good morning, son. Thank yeah. you, Savannah. Women's basketball has been systematically held back. After 49 years of Title IX, we still have work to do. In Their Court, a podcast from NBC News and NBC Sports that goes inside the issues of inequality in women's sports. Listen now.
For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. We're here to start conversations about the big things happening in our world. Because it's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. At 73, Prince Charles is still waiting for the job that is his birthright. Do we want Charles? Do we want a monarchy? I'm Keir Simmons, and we'll take on these questions and more in our new podcast, Born to Rule. Listen now. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. To cover the news, you have to be in it. These are families trying to board those trains to Poland. I also want to get home. You'll get home. Every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Well, maybe Ukrainians were defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Hey, who's this? What would you like to see from the federal government to keep Buffalo safe? If there is legislation brought to you to ban contraception, would you sign it? What should be focused on that could reduce inflation and avoid a recession? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Welcome back. Ahead of Father's Day, we wanted to cook up Al and Craig's ideal Father's Day meal. And when we asked them separately what their dream dish would be, they both said the same thing. Ribeye steak and grilled veggies. So here to whip up our favorite guy's favorite meal is chef and host of Laura in the Kitchen, Laura Vitale. Hi, Laura. All right, guys. So I know some of Al and Craig's favorites include a ribeye steak, some vegetables, mac and cheese. So I wanted to take all of those and just put a really nice, easy spin on them and make them really family friendly. Let's start with the steak, which I'm going to marinate and then you grill or you can sear totally up to you. And we're going to top it on a beautiful cob salad. It makes it go really far. So let's talk steak. I've got a boneless ribeye here. Now, if you were serving just one or two people and you want to do something really special, you could do a bone in. But when we're trying to feed a family, you get more bang for your buck if you're doing it boneless because you buy it by the pound, you know? So let's get going on the marinade. It's really important that the marinade uh, and your steak are in a container that's small enough so that the steak is sort of surrounded in the marinade and not that the marinade is sort of all over the place so much that the steak isn't even touching it. You need soy sauce and olive oil, light soy, Worcestershire sauce, a little vinegar, a little steak seasoning, including some salt and pepper. And then you need some onion and some garlic. You're gonna take this mixture, right? You're gonna smoosh it around. And then you're gonna take your steak, okay? And you're gonna just add that in there. You see how it's literally sitting on the marinade? You're gonna leave it like this for about six to eight hours. Halfway through, you're gonna come in and you're gonna flip the steak. Make sure you cover it. Flip it so that it's coating the other side and it's going to be the most succulent and delicious steak ever. So I already have one ready because I can't take you outside grilling. I know it's rough, but imagine you take that steak and you grill it to perfection. And I'll show you what it looks like because you're going to absolutely love it. It looks a little something like this. You're going to take your steak. I'm going to take a cutting board. If you hear that, that's my little chachi. That's my little baby. She's not so little anymore, but you know, I like mine a little bit more on the medium rare side, but you can cook it as much or as little as you want. And then we're going to use this to top our beautiful salad. Let me show you over here what our salad looks like. Okay. I've got your usual suspects for a cob salad, avocado, soft boiled egg. I've got some bacon, some onion, tomatoes. And now what I've done is I went ahead and grilled some delicious asparagus and some beautiful Brussels sprouts, just olive oil, salt and pepper, a little bit of garlic. Then you take your steak, you're gonna top that right on top. And then instead of doing croutons, I went ahead and roasted some baby, like tiny pieces of potato. It gives you texture, it gives you crunch. It absorbs some of the dressing. Now for the dressing, I went ahead and made a really beautiful green goddess dressing. It's super simple and easy. 
dipped my fingers in that. The ingredients for that are simple. Mayo, lemon, garlic, onion, a little bit of parsley, tarragon, and a couple pieces of anchovies. You blend those in a blender, you have a gorgeous green goddess dressing to go with that. Let's go ahead and make the pasta pie. You've got some cooked pasta, any cooked pasta of your choice. I lost my fork, I lost my fork, hold on. Here it is. Any, any pasta of your choice, already cooked, right? You're gonna, to that, you're gonna add eggs, six eggs, and about a half a cup of whole milk. I'm gonna add some shredded Monterey Jack and cheddar blend, parmigiano, and some cooked bacon. You're gonna mix that all together. You're gonna mix it all together. Then what you do is you take this mixture, you're gonna go to the stove, I got a boss over here. You're gonna go to the stove and you're gonna add this mixture in an oven proof, like nine and a half inch pan that's been oiled. And you're gonna add that in there, let it cook for about a minute, and then you transfer this in a 400 degree oven for 20 minutes until it looks a little something like this. And it is absolutely divine. In an Italian household, we love pasta pie. We love it cold, hot, out of the fridge, you name it. And for a dessert, which I'm gonna show you on the gram, I went ahead and made a strawberry shortcake ice cream cake. So that's everything. It's a real feast and I know you're gonna love it. Laura, thank you, that looks so good. And I now know what I'll be making Brian for Father's Day too. For this recipe and more, head over to today.com slash food. The midterms are here. It's time to plan your vote. We'll provide everything you need to know to successfully cast your ballot. Just select any state you wanna learn about for the primary or general election, and you'll instantly get voting rules, see the next big deadline, and learn how to take action for your plan. Voting rules have changed since 2020, and those rules vary from state to state. So it's time to get planning for 2022. Visit NBCNews.com slash plan your vote today. We'll meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Hey, who's this? For breaking news in our changing world, Download the NBC News app. We're here to start conversations about the big things happening in our world. Because it's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. To cover the news, you have to be in it. These are families trying to board those trains to Poland. I also want to get home. You'll get home. Every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson. Streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast. Available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Oh, I love the music already. This morning on Today Food, it is grilling and chilling with us, the dailies. I love this. Can't believe this is on TV right now. Siri and I, I put it. our heads it's together. Like we wanted to figure out a way to combine. I'm as passionate about music as everybody knows, as you are food. I mean, exactly. yep. you are crazy about food. I'm crazy about music. So we're doing a theme. We wanted to be outside, but it's raining. Raining. We're doing Jamaica. Really good. Jamaica in June. Um, we've gone to Jamaica. I love it. It's my favorite place. When we moved to New York, the Caribbean is much more accessible to us yes. than it is in California. So this, this sort of encompasses Aww, everything we love in life. So we try and replicate that at our house. And of course, it's the food and the cocktails, mm. but it's also about the music. So what I've done is I've curated a playlist that's at today.com. So while you make this meal, play the playlist. It's great. Oh. It's got this song, 96 Degrees in the Shade. This is Third World, great band. I'm playing Hollywood Bowl on July 7th. Steel Pulse, one of my favorite reggae bands of all time. They're English. Check Earth Crisis and True Democracy are two records that have saved my life. We got, of course, Bob Marley. I threw a Sublime song in there. And then you have to yes. go back to Toots and the Maytals. That's yes. OG reggae from the 60s. They started the whole thing off. So there's a good little playlist. Put that on while you're doing this. What's on the Absolutely. menu? Absolutely. It'll set the vibe. All right. So we're going to make some rum punch. Yeah. We're going to start with that. Then some yeah. jerk chicken and some skewered summer vegetables. So the rum punch is easy. Punch. It's just a coconut rum, a light rum, and also an apricot brandy. I want to shout out my brother-in-law, Dylan. This is actually his recipe. We're doing both <laughs> pineapple juice and orange juice. You just throw really it all in there. She's sunbathing. She's all, all right. Good. We're just yeah. going to mix this, this up. And I always make the drink first so you can enjoy the cocktail while yeah. we're going to strain it out, too. Can you do these in a big batch? 
Uh, yes. Absolutely. And the best part is the little floater of dark rum. Yeah, we're going to do a top. dark rum okay. floater on the top. But like that what we you. made for Jenna is a mocktail version, so you just omit all of the alcohol and yes. add, like, some cherry grenadine or pomegranate juice just to give it that fun. So rum punch, is, that's where you get off in yeah. Jamaica. If you're, I mean, that's where you set, you got to have it in your hand, and it, it gets you off. So we're, we're doing jerk so chicken. So now we're going to make jerk chicken. I have some ginger we gotta in fly, here. So we're like, going to fly, too. We're going to make the... But honestly, the cocktail's kind of the most important. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, where's mine, by the, the way? Jerk so um, the jerk spice is interesting. What is in the spices? The pepper is probably the best part. You either get a habanero or a scotch bonnet, but don't touch it with your fingers because that'll really hurt your eyes. Um, so we have uh, Chinese five spice. That's right. probably oh, my right. favorite there's spice cinnamons. in the whole thing. There's cinnamon, there's allspice, there's cayenne, there's paprika, um, brown sugar. You want to throw that in there? Yeah, people are intimidated to make a jerk bit. sauce. You think it's a lot, like the spice, but it's not. Just right. follow the directions no. and throw Literally it all in Literally throw it on a processor, process it up for like... You know, and Craig, you can smooth. jerk anything. We're jerking chicken, but you there can you jerk go. steak. You can do put it on anything. But here right. it is. Jerk it out. And Sorry. the the key is to try to marinate it overnight if you can. An hour is fine, but like the, go ahead you really want to get the um, the seasons all like marrying together and whatnot. Yummy. So yeah, then throw it on the grill. You can do it inside if it's raining. When you're in Jamaica here. and you uh, come out of a bar, or you know, this is like if you're in New York, the hot dogs that are on the mm -hmm. side of the road. Yeah. You food. get jerk chicken right street foods right off the side, yeah. and it's delicious. And this is, you know, so while he does that, I'm going to make 15 minutes on a side on the chicken. Yeah, exactly. 165 like degrees. Charred. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So now yeah. I'm going to um, make yeah. a marinade for the vegetables. So we have lemon really juice, good. olive oil, garlic, uh, mm. salt, and then One jerk minute? seasoning, okay. which you can just get um, at the store. <laughs> and we will pour See, like, that right over now. That's veggies. two to the Maytals rocking out. I got to get my cocktail. Now, I'm if, punch. if you're inside, no like problem we are. On. And you are going to skewer your vegetables, soak them in water. When I flew to Jamaica on Air Jamaica, <laughs> our, oh, an, 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 amazing an story. engine went out over Cuba. And I kid wow. you not, the, the pilot goes, am I no problem, man. <laughs> one thing I learned, we can fly on one engine. We'll be in Jamaica soon, man. Like, I literally. I luckily not there for that flight because I would have <laughs> Oh, it was vomited. fun. It's the best. We got to go. Uh, the playlist at today.com slash food. Check it out. Third hour of today's up next. Check out your local news. Thank you, Siri. God Cheers. bless you all. Cheers. Happy so eating. Great. So good. Cheers. Ooh, the answer's calling. You need that most. Ooh, let it go. Good morning. Wild ride. Wall Street plunges amid growing recession fears. The Dow sinking to its lowest level in more than a year, despite those drastic new measures taken by the Fed. President Biden under fire and on defense. Why he says his policies are not to blame as Americans grow more desperate for answers and 